there's some strange evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. On a sunny, slow afternoon, we welcome you in to San Luis Obispo Blues Baseball. We've got a rubber match. It's game three between the Slow Blues and the Solano Mudcats on the Blues streaming network. The first two games of this series have been full of drama. On Friday, the Blues led most of the way before allowing seven runs in the ninth inning to lose 9-3. to three. Last night, Slow had to work around a couple of questionable calls early. Head coach Dean Drainer was thrown out in the second inning, but in the end, the Blues did enough to even up the series with a 6-4 to four victory. The boys in blue moved, moved to 4-2 and two on the season and now have won six of the last eight games they've played against the Mudcats. The pitching matchup is a good one today. Omar Reynoso is taking the mound for the Blues with his spotless ERA. He will face off against Steven Verespi for the Mudcats. The series is on the line today at Sinsheimer. Is revenge in the air for the Mudcats, or can the Blues send the fans home happy with a W? Stay tuned. We're minutes away from the rubber match on the Slow Blues streaming network. As we welcome you into the broadcast booth, Jack Smith hanging along with you on this beautiful day in San Luis Obispo. It was cloudy all the way up until just about 10 minutes ago, and now the sun is out, the sky is blue, and there is just gorgeous weather for the fans that have gathered here at Sinsheimer Stadium. A record crowd last night for this season, 1,474 fans filed in to watch the Blues win it on the first firework night of the year. First of three, so you still have a chance to come out to Sinsheimer Stadium and see the fireworks that were beautiful throughout the game. If you guys stay tuned and watch the the fireworks on the stream last night. We thank you for staying and watching the festivities. But the fans are back out today, and the Blues are looking for a series victory. We got a first pitch coming through on the mound here. As the fans rise to their feet, going all the way from the deepest part of the mound, and that's a bounce strike. But we're just about ready here for Blues baseball. The rubber match between your San Luis Obispo Blues and the Solano Mudcats here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back for first pitch in the National Anthem. the field and we're almost ready for first pitch here at Sinsheimer Stadium. The Blues and the Mudcats prepping for game three, the rubber match of this three game series. We're just a minute away from the National Anthem. We're going to let you take a listen.
Let's get some baseball going here on a Sunday. And we'll introduce you to the starting lineup for the Solano Mudcats at 1-1 one one on the season. It's Braden Indelicato who gets the start in right field. He bats leadoff. Tyler Toby, who's 1-9 for nine in the series so far, plays shortstop for the third straight day and bats second. Austin Russell, 5-10 for 10 on the series, bats third and plays third base. Jake Tandy, the dual threat for the Solano Mudcats. First baseman and right-hand pitcher, he bats fourth from the University of the Pacific. Nate Schwartz is back behind the plate. He bats fifth. Caleb Jeske, who caught yesterday, is in the DH spot today in the six hole. Max McGee playing center field, bats seventh, and then it's Nate Hamburger in left. Alec Nava in second, batting eighth and ninth. On the mound for your San Luis Obispo Blues is Omar Reynoso making his second start for the Blues this summer. He tossed seven scoreless innings on Memorial Day to get the Blues a 3-1 to one victory. Three hits, three walks, five Ks for Reynoso, who's headed to San Mateo College next year. The first two games in this series were a split. The Mudcats won in game one after that big seven-run sixth inning that was aided by some Blues errors on defense. The Blues came back and won yesterday night's matchup by a score of 6-4. to four. The Mudcats were pesky, but the Blues did just enough to stick it out and grab a win to even up the series. Tonight decides who's going to win the series. And the Mudcats have not won their opening series of the summer in any of the last three years. The Blues have not lost a series at all this year. One of those has to break. As you see, Reynoso warming up on the mound. He's got the teal glove. And the Blues are wearing the gray uniforms. San Luis, written in Navy script across the front. Navy socks and hats, as well as the white script B on the front of the hat. The uniforms are a little bit different for the Solano Mudcats, and we'll show you them in a second when Braden Indelicato steps up to the dish. But I will warn you, they're not blue and red like normal. Using some other colors. But Reynoso's just about ready as the Blues prepare to throw it down and start the top of the first inning. We're here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. I'm Jack Smith. Nate Mills will be with me later. We're ready for Blues baseball here on a beautiful, sunny Sunday. As in Delicato strides in, there are the uniforms. They are black and neon green with the red belts, red socks, red helmets. We believe they are an homage to the California firefighters, but that's just an assumption of ours. Either way, it's in Delicato to lead it off against Reynoso. And there's a swing and a miss to start the game off. First pitch, one minute late, 206 on a beautiful high 60s degree day here in San Luis Obispo. Reynoso working from the stretch, as always. He kicks and deals. And Indelicato takes a two-seamer for a strike on the inside corner. Here's the 0-2. That's high. Reynoso, as we mentioned, 5'11", 255-pound left-hander, headed to San Mateo College next year after playing two different places in high school. He's looking for a strikeout here to start the game. One, two. And that's low. Reynoso pitched for Rigetti High School during his sophomore and junior seasons, but just finished up his senior season at St. Joseph High School at a .64 ERA in 54 and a third. Two, two. And Indelicato lines it to short, but right at Schroeder, for the out, and that's how this game gets started. With one away, let's take you through the San Luis Obispo Blues defense here in the rubber match. Luke Pemberton gets the start in left field. Nin Burns, as always, in center. And Corbin Ibarra plays for the second straight day in right. On the right side of the infield, it's Tollerman and Ruley. Left side is Schroeder and Ricken. And making his Blues debut here in 2023, Jake Bold, the catcher from Princeton, is in the squad. With one away, Reynoso turns his attention to Tyler Toby, the two-hole hitter and misses inside. Toby's one for nine on the weekend with four strikeouts. The shortstop from San Joaquin Delta College. He's been good defensively, but trying to pick it up with the bat here in the third game of the weekend. One out, and that's roped on the ground towards the hole at short. Schroeder has it on the backhand, has to make a long throw, and Toby's too fast, he beats it out. So that's a hit for Toby, who gets his Sunday off to a good start, and a one-out base runner for the Mudcats.
you're not going to see the most overpowering stuff from Reynoso. He can run it up in the mid-80s, maybe the high 80s when he really needs to, but his maintenance velocity hovers around the high 70s, low 80s. He just tries to throw strikes. As there's a beautiful changeup and a swing and a miss from Austin Russell. Russell from Tarleton State. He's played in all three games this weekend. He's hit right in the middle of that order. He's 5 for 10. He was 5 for his first 5 in the series. And he grounds that one to second. Could be 2. Ruley's up with it. Takes it himself to the bag. Throws to first. Low for Tollerman. But a double play. Reynoso turns 2 to get out of it. As we head to the bottom of the first inning. And the Blues will bring up the top of the order. Nin Burns, Jacob Ruley, and Trevor Schmidt do up on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Here's the starting lineup that manager Dean Trainer is sending to the dish for the Blues here today. It's Nin Burns, the second, who will lead it off and play center field, as he has in every game for the Blues this summer. Jacob Ruley makes his third straight start at second base and bats second. Trevor Schmidt leading the team in batting average with a 417 clip, bats third, and DHs for the second straight night. JT Ricken, back in the lineup, plays third and bats fourth. Jake Bold making his Blues debut. The catcher from Princeton is in the five spot after hitting 313 for the Tigers. Corbin Ibarra again in right field from Tulane. He bats sixth. Zach Tollerman is in the seventh spot and playing first. Luke Pemberton in left. He bats eighth. And Augusto Schroeder from Arkansas State hits ninth and plays short. As Nin Burns steps up, he looks out at Stephen Verespi, the starting pitcher for the Mudcast today. Six foot two, 215 pound right hander, a 3.33 ERA, and 54 innings pitched this past year. He was the Northwest Conference. Rookie of the Year at Willamette. And he kicks and fires to Burns, who cues that one out of play. It's one ball and no oh, no balls and one strike. Reynoso faced the minimum in the first inning, gave up a single, but turned a double play to get out of the inning. He continues to work quick as a blue starter. A one, and that's up. Burns is hitting 150 on the young season for the Blues. He's gotten on base in a variety of ways, but wants to bring the batting average up, and he's a dangerous man when he gets on base with five stolen bases to lead the team. Burns was the leadoff hitter for Cal Poly Pomona in just about every game this past year in his sophomore season. Played in 48 of the 52 games that the Broncos had on the schedule. 2-1. And he lines that one out to deep right center field. And Delicato, the right fielder, is going back. He watches it to the track, and it bounces off the wall on one hop. Burns is going to stop at second, and he's got a leadoff double to start the game. And then Burns with a stroke of power to right. And he feels good about that swing. He's been trying to work through going the opposite way, punching the ball, and he punched that one all the way to the wall. And now you've got speed on the base paths in scoring position for the Blues with nobody out. Jacob Ruley, the right-handed hitting second baseman from CSU Bakersfield, steps to the dish now, trying to 
bring in a run for the Blues. He's batting 333 across the two games he's played so far. Two doubles in one in each game. And that's outside. Or right there on the black for a strike, 0-1-1. So Steven Varespi right into stretch mode with a runner in scoring position after a couple pitches. A one. That's a big curveball. Popped up on the infield. In foul territory. Tandy looks it and it watches, watches it fly past the Blues dugout on the first baseline out of play. 0-2. Varespi is running in there with velocity on the fastball. The first pitch that he threw was clocked at 95 miles an hour. Easily the highest velo that the Blues have faced this season. And it's really not particularly close. Oh, two? And Ruli strikes out swinging. That's exactly what Varespi needed. He got a three-pitch strikeout of Ruli, and now Trevor Schmidt comes up. Schmidt, a 417 hitter for the Blues so far, leads today's lineup and runs batted in with four, and he's walked nine times. The CCL leader in on-base percentage so far this year. He's been hard to get out. Defense shifts him slightly to pull. As here's the 0-0. Runner takes off for third, and a liner that way. Nin Burns taps the bag at third. He's coming in to score, and the Blues will lead it early here. one nothing. A hit and run to perfection for the Blues as Schmidt stayed on it, sent it the other way, and Burns scored with ease. And the Blues are on the board first. It's 1-0 here with two hits in the first inning. And now JT Ricken comes up and wants to start another rally with Schmidt at first. Great piece of hitting from Trevor Schmidt. And with Burns' speed, an easy run for the Blues. Pick back to first, and Schmidt's back in. Rick in a 222 hitter so far in the summer, headed to Oregon. He's got three runs batted in. He's hitting the big moments. Presby from the stretch, and he misses low. Here's how the Mudcats line it up defensively. It's Hamburger in left, McGee in center, and Delicato in right. On the infield from left to right, Russell, Toby, Nava, and Tandy, and Schwartz is back behind the dish, catching the second game of this series. Here's the 1-0, and that is out. Two balls and no strikes on JT Ricken. Ricken, who was a prized prospect coming out of the Pacific Northwest, committed to Oregon, then tore his hamstring and missed all of last season. 2-0. That's tapped right back towards Shore. Toby has it. Underhand flipped to second for one to first. Not in time as Ricken has too much speed. He beats it out. And a fielder's choice to second for the second out of the inning. Here's the fresh face for the Blues on offense. It's Jake Bold, the catcher from Princeton, a 313 hitter in his freshman season, the lone freshman at Princeton to hit above the 300 mark. He had three home runs, 24 runs batted in in his first season at the collegiate level. He gets the start today at catcher and bats fifth here in the first. Oh, oh. And Bold takes a mighty hack and fouls it off his own foot. It's no balls in one strike. Bold was one of only three hitters, in fact, to hit over 300 for Princeton this past season. Six foot, 190 pound catcher, heading into his sophomore season next year after graduating La Jolla Country Day out in La Jolla, California. As that back pick towards first hit JT Ricken in the helmet, and he's slow to get up at first. Time is granted. That's a play that you don't see very often. The pick went a little bit wide of Tandy, the first baseman, hit Ricken in the back of the helmet. The ball ricocheted all the way to second base. And now Ricken's getting checked out by the trainers. And Dean Trainer out to check on Ricken. Everyone out there is consoling the rising, 
redshirt freshman from Oregon, checking to see if he's all right. And it looks like he is. He's going to stay in the game, stay at first base. So disaster avoided for the Blues. And the count still no balls and one strike on Bold. Perespi still towing the rubber. He's going to step back on now and prepare to throw the 0-1. Two outs in the bottom of the first. The Blues struck first on the RBI single from Trevor Schmidt. For SB deals, Ricken takes off for second, and Bold slashes it foul down the right field line. That ball was hit deep, but not in fair territory in its own two. So Ricken gets hit in the head by a pickoff move and steals the next pitch. We'll see if he runs again with two strikes. But if you needed a sign that Ricken was okay at first, I think there it is. Varespi has bold 0-2. We'll see if he goes back to the heater. And time is called by bold at home plate. The two-strike delivery. And bold strikes out swinging on the changeup. The Blues strike first. We head to the top of the first, top of the second inning, and it is one nothing Blues on the RBI single from Trevor Schmidt. Howdy from Zinsheimer Stadium with the Blues up by a score of one to nothing. It's four five six coming up for the Solano Mudcats. Jake Tandy, Nate Schwartz, and Caleb Jeske due to tee it off against Omar Reynoso. Reynoso got a line out, then gave up a single in the first before rolling a double play to get out of the inning. It went four three as Ruley, the second baseman, took it himself and threw to the bag for the final out of the inning. Now Tandy, the first baseman from University of the Pacific. Three for nine here this weekend. He takes a strike. Reynoso steps off, wants another sign as he prepares to deal the 0-1. Rubber match today. Blues and Mudcats game three of this three-game series. Winner take all. 0-1. That's out. Reynoso, who ha hails from Santa Maria, California, will play at San Mateo College next year after a two-school high school stint. And that is popped up off the hands. Tollerman watches it back to the netting as Bold kind of chases it towards the Blues' dugout and watches it fall for a strike. At Rigetti High School in his sophomore and junior seasons, Reynoso had a 2.53 ERA and 102 and a third career innings pitched at Rigetti. 97 strikeouts. 
And then he goes and just ratchets things up in his senior year. Has the ERA under .7. That's tough to do. 1-2. That's fought off foul on the first baseline. Counts still one ball and two strikes. Tandy, then Schwartz, then Jeske. Tandy, we saw DH yesterday and came in to pitch at the top of the ninth inning and struck out the side. A dual threat for the Mudcats. He fouls that one off down the first baseline as well. And the count's still one and two. Reynoso was averaging right around 80 miles an hour on the fastball. And when he goes to the off speed, you see about a 10 mile per hour drop. See if that's what he goes to here, one, two. He kicks and deals. And that's popped up right back and out of play. Bold's going to chase it to the netting, but it falls foul. Still one and two. Little battle going on between Jake Tandy and Omar Reynoso here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. And the crowd, big crowd here today on Sunday. I'll tell you, the people from San Luis Obispo love their blues. Just under 1,500 people yesterday, similar crowd today. 1-2 offering. Slider fouled back. Tandy had to wait on that one a while and just got a piece. And the count is still 1-2. and two. Reynoso from the stretch, kicks and deals. And that's a high drive down the left field line. Hook and way foul. That was a rocket off the bat. Tandy caught all of that one but couldn't keep it fair. 93 miles an hour off the lumber. So everyone's going to catch their breath a bit. Reynoso steps off. Tandy steps out to try and straighten it up with two strikes. Reynoso delivers, and Tandy hits this one a mile, also foul. That one a little bit further, just about the same spot, though. And the teammate he has that went to pick up the first one had made it about halfway back to the dugout and then turned back around to pick up the second foul ball. The life of a relief pitcher. Here's another one, too, and Reynoso gets him to foul it off again. Tandy just loves to foul it off. That's what I'm picking up in this at-bat. Sending it right back to the net. Eleventh pitch of the at-bat incoming. Seven foul balls, and it's still a one and two count as Reynoso leaves the zone two and two. So Tandy is making the left-hander work. Two balls, two strikes. Still looking for his first out here in the second. The defense plays Tandy to pull. Reynoso comes home, and Tandy hits a high pop-up down the first baseline, and that's out of play, hooking past the Blues' dugout. 13 pitches now in the at-bat. And a lot of the times when you see an at-bat get this long, it's because the count is three balls and two strikes, but Reynoso still has a ball to work with if he wants to leave the zone and try and get Tandy to chase. We'll see if that's what he does here. 2-2. Two -two. Little leg kick, and he misses inside. Three balls and two strikes. Reynoso and the fans wanted the call. As Reynoso now picks his hat back up, takes a little bit of a walk. He thought he just struck out Tandy looking. 14 pitches. Here comes the 15th with a 3-2 count. Reynoso deals. And that's low. A 15-pitch walk for Tandy to open up the at-bat. And that is a base runner with nobody out here on the top of the second inning. Just an all-class at-bat from Tandy, the first baseman. Eight foul balls in the at-bat. And he eventually just draws the walk. And Reynoso wondering how he could not put Tandy away there after getting ahead with two strikes. And there's a high drive towards deep center field. Burns is chasing it, but he's got a beat on it. With the sunglasses on, he fights the sky and makes the catch one away. So you go from a 15-pitch at-bat with a walk to a one-pitch at-bat where you get an out. I think I know which one Omar Reynoso prefers. And with one away, Caleb Jeske steps to the dish. The catcher from Marin Community College made his debut for the Mudcats yesterday and went two for four with a triple.
Owo. And Jeske takes that pesky slider on the outside for a strike. Reynoso really slows that pitch down. Does not even register on the velocity chart here at Sinsheimer Stadium. And that is a rope down the left field line out of play. There's a storage unit down the left field line that's been pelted by all of these foul balls that are just roped way foul on the left field side. Then the count moves to no balls and two strikes. We'll see what Reynoso goes to here. He's gone soft stuff for both pitches to Jeske. He kicks and deals. It's hard stuff away, and it's a little bit out, one ball and two strikes. Reynoso on the rubber. Third base side, he comes down the hill. And misses inside, is off the glove of Bold. And the runner moves up to second base. Runner in scoring position with a 2-2 count and one out for the Mudcats. First defensive mistake for Bold, the Princeton catcher behind the plate. That one looked like it might have caught the knee of Jeske, the hitter. But Bold could not reel it in the glove and let it bounce to the backstop. As the Mudcats look to tie it up here on the top of the second. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's low. And this time, Bold keeps it in front. Three balls and two strikes. On deck is yesterday night's leadoff hitter, Max McGee, the center fielder from San Joaquin Delta College. One for five with three strikeouts yesterday. Three balls, two strikes, the count. Reynoso strides and shoots. And there's another foul ball back to the netting. And the count's still full. Reynoso is losing his hat on just about every pitch, and every time he gets the ball back, he looks frustrated. Just has not found the put-away pitch yet today. In the seven innings, scoreless, he threw on Memorial Day. Only five strikeouts. He was just forcing a lot of weak contact. Does not have the strikeout stuff that we've seen from some of the other Blues pitchers so far this season. 3-2, and that's high. Another walk and a real nice at-bat. For the Mudcats, first and second with one out. So now Bold's going to go out and talk with his left-hander. Puts a pat on the back and going for a talk. The infield's going to join him, and I think this discussion is, hey, you're pitching these guys well. Don't get frustrated. They're just having good at-bats right now. And with a pitcher like Reynoso, like we saw in the first inning, he's always just one pitch away from getting out of the inning. He can roll a double play. He's a ground ball pitcher. There's a lot of these crafty left-handers can be. Get on the hands, roll a ground ball, and Reynoso could forget all about the inning if he's able to get Jeske to ground into a double play here. So here's Jeske, caught yesterday, DHing today, with two runners on, just one out. Reynoso delivers. And that changeup is on the black on the inside corner for a strike. Well, the Blues playing their third game of the weekend, their third game in June. And when the month is all said and done, they'll have played 20 games here in what feels like the first month of the summer, at least the first real month. And that's a big swing and a miss on the changeup. No balls and two strikes. Reynoso's had no issue getting to two strikes. It's all about putting the hitter away once he gets there. He looks to sit down Jeske for the second out of the frame. Down Broadway. And a tapper towards third, but foul. And that's going to roll towards the dugout for the Mudcats. The count's still 0-2. Cowbells ring here at Sinsheimer. Here's the two-strike offering. It's low and outside on the changeup. One ball and two strikes. Real nice two-strike pitch from Reynoso. He has the opportunity to go out of the zone with an 0-2 count. Took advantage and just didn't get Jeske to chase. One-two. Inside. So the count, two balls and two strikes. It evens up. And Reynoso, who's dealing to Max McGee, the center fielder. 
now might have to come back in the strike zone. He's got one more pitch to waste, but he's trying to induce an inning-ending double play ball for the second straight frame. He looks back to second and comes home. And McGee takes high, three balls and two strikes. So from 0-2 to 3-2, a walk would load the bases for Nate Hamburger, the left fielder, and would put the potential tying run 90 feet away and would give the Mudcats a chance to maybe tie the game on a sacrifice fly. Big pitch here in the second inning. Here's the 3-2. And that's a high fly ball down the left field line. Pemberton chases it as he gets to the foul line. He watches it out of play. Still 3-2. and two. Tandy at second, Jeske at first. Reynoso fires and catches the inside corner, strike three. Reynoso thought that was the third out, and he starts to walk back to the Blues dugout, but it's not out number three, Omar. That's just out two, but a big strikeout in a strikeout spot for Omar Reynoso. He caught McGee looking with a beautiful dotted changeup on the inside corner. So now everything for the Mudcats lies on the shoulders of Nate Hamburger, the left fielder from Willamette. One for six with a triple in the series. And the count is one ball and no strikes. A walk for Tandy to open the frame on a 15 pitch at bat. Schwartz flew out to center. Jeske walked, and that was a big strikeout of McGee for the second out. 1-0 in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. So Hamburger's the only hitter that Reynoso really has not gotten out in front of in this inning. He'll have to rally his way back. He strides and shoots. And misses low and outside. Three balls and no strikes. Dangerous spot now. A walk again. Loads the bases for the nine-hole hitter Alec Nava on deck, who's bounced up and down the lineup in this series, but he's played in all three games so far this weekend for the Mudcats. Got to come in the zone. 3-0. And Reynoso does just that. Hits the outside corner with a fastball. Blues one out away from getting out of the second and preserving their one nothing lead that they cultivated in the bottom of the first inning. 3-1. And that is outside. Three walks in the inning now, and the bases are loaded for the nine-hole hitter, Nava. Tandy's at third. Jeske's now at second. And Hamburger walks his way to first. And Dean Trainer's going to come out and talk with Reynoso. There is an arm warming up in the bullpen for the Blues. It's number four, Alec Naren, the right-hander, who threw two innings on Friday. But if Dean Trainer feels that that this is a big moment in the series. He might take the ball from Reynoso. So far, looks like just a conversational moment. But it is a big spot, and if Dean Trainer wants to go to the right-hander with Reynoso's command not exactly there in this inning, it'd be hard to blame the veteran pitching coach and first-year Blues head coach. He's going to leave Reynoso out there, though, and Reynoso will face Nava with the bases juiced. The three walks in this inning have matched now Reynoso's three walks that he threw in seven innings just last week on Memorial Day when he didn't give up a run, got a win against the Bay Area Admirals to give the Blues a winning weekend. Well, he's got a rally up here. Two outs, bases loaded. The nine-hole hitter, Nava, at the dish. The potential tying run in Jake Tandy at third. Reynoso dishes, and Nava takes it low. Bold, able to spear it with his glove, and it's one ball and no strikes. And with the bases loaded, you really have to be careful. Any kind of pass ball or wild pitch would bring in a run and tie this game up. Here's the 1-0. And Nava taps it back over the mound. The shortstop Schroeder plays it in off a hop, and it clanks off his glove. Nava gets lucky, and a run comes in to score for the Mudcats. We're tied here at Sinsheimer Stadium, 1-1. One one. 
And Schroeder, who would have been a tough play, couldn't keep it in the leather. And now the chance for a bigger inning for the Mudcats. Top of the order coming up in Braden Indelicato. And the base is still loaded. Schroeder, I think it's one he wants to have, but still is a really tough play. But Nava's awarded with a single, so an earned run. For Omar Reynoso is first of the summer, and it's one ball and no strikes. Nava at first, Hamburger at second, and Caleb Jeske, the designated hitter, is at third. Three walks in the inning. That was the first hit. Softly tapped, and a big swing and a miss. So we're all tied up as the Mudcats answered right back to the Blues scoring in the bottom of the first inning. They hope to add more. Bases loaded in two outs with the top of the order at the plate. 1-1. One, one. And Delicato leaves that out of the zone. Two balls and one strike. The Mudcats haven't won an opening series in each of the last four summers. A win today would give them a series victory over the Blues 2-1. to one. Here's the 2-1 pitch. And that is lined out to center field. Nin Burns chases it into the gap. And he's not going to get there. It bounces up. Three hops off the wall. The left fielder Pemberton plays it on a bounce. He throws into the shortstop Schroeder. And three runs come in to score. A bases clearing double and a nightmare inning for the Blues. 4-1 now the score. The Mudcats have scored four runs here. All with two outs. And the walks come back to bite Reynoso. That might be the end of his day as Dean Trainer's coming out of the dugout again. Four runs in the inning, and the inning's still not over. And a pitching coach's worst nightmare is always the walk. Dean Trainer's still looking for the umpire to grant him the ability to go out. And with it being his second mound visit of the inning, there's an argument going on. Not sure what this is about. Dean Trainer did get tossed from the game yesterday in the second inning, so there's not a very happy feeling in this Blues coaching staff. But he finally takes the ball from Reynoso, who has given up four runs here in the second. It's 4-1 Mudcats. The inning's not over, and Naren's coming in. We'll be right back on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Naren's in, runner at second, two outs as the Mudcats have scored four runs in the inning and Tyler Toby, who singled his first time up, is at the dish. Blue's trying to get out of this nightmare inning and Toby fouls the first pitch he sees out of play, 0-1-1. Naren, a 5.06 ERA and five and a third innings pitch so far this season. As we mentioned, two innings on Friday, gave up an earned run on three hits. A one. 
And Toby hits it on a line, one hop to short. Schroeder plays the backhand, throws a long throw over to first. And Tollerman scoops it out for the out. The Mudcats, though, score four runs in the inning, and the Blues have watched their lead evaporate. We head to the bottom of the second. It's 4-1 Mudcats. Blues offense has some work to do now. In the bottom of the second inning, they've watched their lead go from 1-0 to a 4-1 deficit. And Corbin Ibarra, Zach Tollerman, and Luke Pemberton do up to try and get the Blues back into this game. The Mudcats took advantage of three walks by Omar Reynoso. Got a single and a double to bring in four runs in the inning. An ugly outing for the Blues in the top of the second. And now they've got some work to do on offense. And Corbin Ibarra bends back out of the way of that fastball. It's one ball and no strikes. Blues are 6-2 in their last eight versus the Mudcats, but are now in danger of dropping two of three and losing this series as Ibarra has got a base hit to right field. It bounces in front of Indelicato, the right fielder, and Ibarra's aboard with his first hit of the summer. And a runner aboard immediately for the Blues, trailing by three. Tollerman at the dish now, 111 batting average, seven walks on the summer. Got real unlucky yesterday. More on that in a second as he takes a slider for a strike. Tollerman hit what would have been a go-ahead sack fly that was taken off the board when the umpire said Trevor Schmidt did not tag from first. Not exactly his fault. And then... Tollerman grounded into a double play as he hits a high drive towards left field. It's hanging up for Hamburger, and it's just foul as Hamburger crashes into the fence. No balls and two strikes. Tollerman would have had an RBI on a ground ball to short, but the umpires ruled that he was out at first on a 6-4-3 double play. A blatant missed call at first as Tollerman had beaten it by clearly a step or two. So he was on the bad end of two unfortunate double play calls that the Blues were not big fans of whatsoever. 0-2 the count as Verespi works for his second inning. From the stretch, he picks towards first, and Ibarra's back in safe. Tallerman, 6'5", back of the right-hand box. As Verespi looks at the outside corner. And Tollerman lines it into left field. Base hit. Ibarra rounds the bag at second. He stops there. And Tollerman gets on base with a two-strike base hit. His third of the summer. The Blues are going station to station now. And they help bring the tying run to the plate. Blues gave up the lead in the top half of the inning. And they're right back with the bats. Trying to answer back. Luke Pemberton coming up. The left fielder from Pepperdine, a 100 average. He's one for 10. He does have a walk. 
Peresby comes home. And Pemberton hits a high, lofty fly ball to right. And Delicato has to come in, calls off the second baseman, Nava, and catches it as he ranges towards the line, one out. So Pemberton's retired on one pitch, and here comes Augusto Schroeder. Augusto Schroeder, the Arkansas State shortstop, 125 average on the young season. He's got one run batted in for the Blues. Yesterday, he was 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Getting the start at third. And he hits a liner into the right center field gap, and Delicato comes in. Tollerman is off the bag at first base, but Tandy was not covering, or else the Blues could have been doubled up. Tollerman thought that was going to fall. So did I, but it hung up for the glove of Indelicato, and there's two outs on two straight pitches. So Schroeder hit it hard, but a little bit unlucky at where that one ended up. And now it's up to the shoulders of Nin Burns with two away. Burns doubled his first time up, hit it 350 feet to right center field, 95 miles an hour off the bat. He's seeing it better today than he had coming into this game. Had a 150 average before his first at bat. Got his first extra base hit of the summer with the double off for Respi with two strikes back in the first inning. Ibarra is second, Tollerman at first. As Respi strides and shoots, and Burns takes the slider low. Burns, an all-CAA honorable mention this year at Cal Poly Pomona in the outfield. He's played every single game for the Blues thus far in the summer. 2-0. And that's on the outside corner for a strike. Burns bends back, doesn't agree with the call, and the count two balls and one strike. Burns, a player who normally walks as much as he strikes out, and the strikeout numbers have been a slight bit of a concern for his season in the Blues so far. 2-1. And he hits another rocket shot towards right field. And Delicato's got a beat on this one, though. And he puts his glove up for the third straight out to right field. The Blues get two straight base runners, but strand them both. And we head to the top of the third inning, and it's still 4-1 Mudcats. the third at Sinsheimer and it's Austin Russell, Jake Tandy and Nate Schwartz due up for the Solano Mudcats who trail or who lead by a score of 4-1. to one. And Alec Naren is still back out there after coming in in relief for Omar Reynoso who gave up all four runs in the second last inning on three walks as Russell takes a ball. And Aaron came in, got the final out of the inning, got Toby to ground out towards short. But three walks, then a single and a double Got the scoring started for the Mudcats last inning, and that's out of play. 
The Blues struck first, but the Mudcats struck back and struck a little bit harder. And so for the Blues, in this rubber match, they of course have a long way to go, but need to find some kind of a way to get momentum back in this game. They had two straight singles in the bottom of the second, but then three straight flyouts to right. Naren, who's on the hill, just finished up his senior season at San Luis Obispo High School, leading the team in innings pitched and strikeouts. As Russell pops this one up down the first baseline, Tollerman gives it chase, but it's into the Blues' bullpen, 2-2. Two and two. A 2.44 ERA for Naren, a 7-3 season, pitched 57 and a third innings on the hill and struck out 52 batters. He also dabbled in hitting a bit, 260 average, two home runs, and 11 runs batted in as Russell watches it high. Undecided where he's going next, but the San Luis Obispo native playing for the Blues here this summer, trying to maybe get and gather some attention from collegiate teams as he walks the leadoff hitter here in the top of the third, and Russell is aboard. Jake Tandy walked and scored his first time up. That was back last inning. He led off the second with a 15-pitch at-bat and drew a walk at the end. One of the more impressive at-bats that you will see all summer, frankly. And that was a big at-bat. Set the tone as Russell takes off for second. Throw down from Bold, not even close. As Austin Russell read Naren like a book and a runner in scoring position with nobody out. But Tandy set the, set the stage for what the inning was going to be. A lot of tough at-bats for the Mudcats, and they got a lot of pitches out of Reynoso, drew three walks, and eventually brought across all the runs to score. Tandy lines that into the right center field gap over the head of the second baseman, Ruley. The throw goes into third. This could be close, and it's by JT Ricken. Russell up from the third base bag. He comes in to score. On the missed throw by Jacob Ruley, it's 5-1, Mudcats. And the Blues just don't look all that sharp here today at Sinsheimer Stadium. It was a little flare over the head of Ruley. He had a chance at third base, but the answer is always long hop or no hop on the throw. He short hopped JT Ricken, and it bounced all the way back to the dugout. Two batters in, and the Mudcats have extended their lead. So a single and an E4. And Russell, who had stolen the bag, comes all the way in to score 5-1. to one. This is Nate Schwartz, the catcher. He takes a curveball for a strike. Schwartz, one for four now on the weekend after his flyout in the second inning. He really tagged the ball, but Nin Burns, with his speed and center, was able to track it down. 0-2. And that's low. It's two balls and one strike. Naren from the stretch. Kicks and deals. And that's a liner into left. Another base hit for the Mudcats. Jake Tandy is being held up at third base. Runners at the corners, nobody out. So for as much as the Blues had dominated the Mudcats across these past three summers, the Mudcats came into San, to San Luis Obispo. They've got a little revenge on their mind, and they've got a sizable lead here today in the rubber match of this series, trying to win their opening series of the summer and hand the Blues their first series loss here in 2023. As Caleb Jeske, the designated hitter, steps up, runners at first and third, still no outs in the inning. Naren delivers, and that's low and out. Bold keeps it in front, though, to keep the run from scoring from third. Tandy is at third. He singled to right center field. Nate Schwartz is at first after his single, a rocket into left. 1-0. That's on the outside corner for a strike.
the, the Blues now have allowed 18 runs in this series, and we're still going. They had allowed 18 runs, or 13 runs only, in the first four games of the summer coming into this series. So the Mudcats have taken advantage of Blues pitching. Yesterday was a four-run performance for the Mudcats offense as the Blues kind of stymied them throughout the game after the first inning. But today's a different story. Already five runs on the scoreboard for Solano. Here's the 1-2, and that is tapped towards short. Schroeder has to come in. Overhand throw to second for one, and that's all the Blues are going to get. 6-1 now the score as Tandy comes in to score from third. That's the first out of the inning, but now a five-run lead for the Mudcats. Max McGee steps up now from San Joaquin Delta College. He's one for six this weekend with four strikeouts and struck out looking back in the second. Runner takes off for second. Here's the throw from Bold, and it is off his own pitcher, Naren. Tried to skip it into second base, and a little friendly fire as Jake Bold sniped Alec Naren with the throw, and the runner takes second base. Two balls and no strikes, and Caleb Jeske is in scoring position. That's the second stolen base that Bold has allowed in the inning. And... It looked like that one might have just slipped and he hit his own pitcher. Dysfunction for the Blues here today as there's a rocket on the ground towards short. Schroeder looks the runner back to second and throws long to first in time for the out. The batter now will be Nate Hamburger, the left fielder, walked and scored in the second, one of the four runs that the Mudcats put out in the inning. That fly ball goes out to Ibarra, the right fielder, who makes the one-handed catch in time for the out. Two more runs for the Mudcats. It's 6-1 as we head to the bottom of the third here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Blues have their work cut out for them. one Mudcats in the bottom of the third inning, and the Blues have a lot of work to do to try and come back in this one. They'll bring up 2-3-4 in the order. Jacob Ruley, Trevor Schmidt, JT Ricken do up. And the Mudcats have erupted these past two innings. Four runs in the second, two runs in the third. And the Blues, who had looked like they were off to a real nice start with a run after three batters in the top of the first inning, now trail by five. Here in the rubber match, Game three of this three-game series. 
And Ruley takes that low for a ball. It's 1-0. Ruley struck out swinging on three pitches off of Verespi in the first. 1-0. And he hits a high fly ball towards center. This is shallow. McGee and Indelicato are coming in. It's Indelicato, the right fielder, who makes the one-handed catch for the out. So Ruley's 0-2, and Trevor Schmidt, who has the lone RBI today, is coming to the dish. He's been by far the best Blues hitter this season. Hitting well above 400, an OBP that's even higher. Leads the team and runs batted in now with five. Big bright spot for the Blues here early on in 2023. He takes it low, 1-0. and Verespi comes home, and that is outside again. Two balls and no strikes. Schmidt, who committed to Arizona, where he redshirted this past season as a sophomore at Servite High School, said he chose Arizona because every time he visited the school, he just felt like he belonged there. As here's the 2-0 pitch, and he skies it out to center field. McGee ranges over to his right, comes in a couple steps, and makes the catch two away. But for Schmidt, he said he also liked how it was far enough away from home, so he felt like he was living on his own, but... He still is a family guy. He said it felt close enough that his parents could still easily come and watch him. He was attracted to the baseball program because of facilities and the coaching staff and was able to see himself playing there in a competitive Pac-12 that even with Schmidt not playing this past season as a, as a redshirt freshman, still made it all the way to the Pac-12 tournament championship and were just eliminated yesterday from the NCAA tournament but had a really nice season, the Wildcats did, after a disappointing regular season in the Pac-12. They turn things around in postseason play. JT Ricken fouls this one off. No balls and two strikes. Two outs in the bottom of the third. 6-1 Mudcat lead. Verespi has worked pretty well since allowing the early run. He's allowed four hits, but working around it real nicely these past couple innings. And he misses high with a fastball, one ball and two strikes. Ricken also a red shirt this past season at another Pac-12 institution at the University of Oregon, who they're the team that beat Arizona in the Pac-12 tournament championship. As Ricken strikes out swinging, throw down to first from the catcher Schwartz is in time to get it. The Blues go 1-2-3. We head to the top of the fourth. Nate Mills will join me. It is still 6-1 Mudcats. third of the way through the game here at Sinsheimer Stadium and you know what that means the wonderful Nate Mills is in the booth with me and I've got a partner someone to talk to as the Blues are down by five runs here in the top of the fourth inning Nate what's the vibe in the dugout with the Blues squandering the early one nothing lead yeah you know it's tough I think the Blues started out well they're swinging the bat they're getting some loud out some loud content uh, some loud uh, contact but you know you put up a four spot in the second another base hit up the middle right here for the Mudcats, they're, they're stringing together some 
gritty at bats. They're staying alive. It seemed like their pitchers in Naren and Reynoso were getting guys to counts with two strikes, and the Mudcats doing a great job making the Blues throw pitches and eventually making them pay and winning the battle. And it's tough as a dugout to stay in it there, but the boys are staying locked as much as they can. Alec Nava, who just singled, the nine-hole hitter is two for two. So back to the top of the lineup in Braden Indelicato. He's got the biggest hit of the game. He fouls that one off. He hit the double that cleared the bases to put the Mudcats in front. But you mentioned it. It was the two-strike fouling off of party that happened in the second inning. It started with Jake Tandy, the four-hitter. 15-pitch at-bat and a walk. You ever had a having at-bat that long? Not that long. I've had long at-bats, but 15 pitches is, is quite a bit, and that's a good thing to do for a hitter to make your pitcher work and see as many as you can. In the dirt, the, the Blues have the runner caught up between first and second base. They chase Nava to second. Tollerman flips to Schroeder, and now Schroeder is going to tag out Nava for the first out. And that's a great job by the new guy, Jake Bold, blocking that ball in dirt, keeping it in front. Eyes looking directly to the first base. Catches Nava right in the middle, and the Blues doing a good job on that rundown right there. We're seeing it too. Talk about it all the time when you practice it, when you want to squeeze in on the runner. You don't just want to stand at your bag. It looked like the infield was doing a good job at coming in towards the runner, and they would get out number one. Nava thought about taking off for second on the ball in dirt and didn't fully commit, so Bold made him pay. And a 2-1-1 and one count on Indelicato. But you're right, that's the second time in this series that the Blues have had one of those innings on defense. And, and if you're watching from home, you know what those innings means. Just when it just won't end, runs are being scored with two outs, there's free 90s going on, the defense isn't fully up to par, and it's hard not to check out after an inning like that. But it's still early in this game. The Blues have time, but they need to keep it as close as possible and get the bats going. As in Delicato swings and misses. Yeah, those defensive innings kind of happen quickly. It kind of just takes one play before all the dominoes fall down. It's kind of an avalanche of unfortunate events. 3-2. And Indelicato skies it to left. Pemberton, the left fielder, is over towards the line, and he makes the catch. But Naren has come in. He, he got that final out, gave up two more runs of his own last inning. There was some poor defense behind him as well. The missed throw from Jacob Ruley, the second baseman. Jake Bold allowed a couple runners to steal and hit Naren with a low throw. Wasn't sure whether it glanced off the side of him or missed. It was so close, but the Blues just don't look as sharp here today. And also props to the Mudcats for showing up. In the rubber match, of course, they're the road team, not in their comfortable environment, but they've showed up. They've worked some real nice at-bats in this series, and they're impressive to start the summer. This is cued softly to second in the air. Ruley is under it to make the catch, and a 1-2-3 inning for the Blues. We head to the bottom of the fourth. It is still 6-1 Mudcats.
mankind won't be destroyed. Bottom of the fourth here at Sinsheimer Stadium, and Jake Bold is coming up for his second at bat. He leads things off for the Blues here in the fourth. It's Bold, Ibarra, and Tollerman as the Blues trail it by five runs here at Sinsheimer in the rubber match with the Solano Mudcats. You get a chance to talk to Bold down in the dugout making his Blues debut? I, yeah, I did, man. Jake Bold, good egg. Fellow San Diegan. We both grew up in San Diego together. We had some talking points there. But, you know, Ivy kid, catcher, smart guy. Just a good egg overall. You feel like the smartest guys on the field are always the catchers. Yes. They're the yeah. ones that go on to be the managers or the head coaches, bullpen coach. A lot of good eggs behind the dish. Especially when you're an Ivy guy. Yeah, it takes, it takes some smarts to get into Princeton as well, I think. That bold, his first time up, struck out swinging. He wants to get on the hit list for the Blues. Get a batting average, 1-1. And he taps that towards short. The shortstop, Toby, is over. Behind the bag, he flips to first in time for the out. So one away, and now up comes Corbin Ibarra. Bull put a good swing on that one. Hit it pretty well. Shortstop got kind of a good hop right there, and in Delicato hops right into his glove, and he makes out number one, makes way for Ibarra to do some damage. Ibarra got his first hit of the summer to lead off the second inning. In fact, the Blues had back-to-back -back singles to start the inning from Ibarra and Tollerman, who's on deck. But then it was three straight flyouts to right field, and the Blues squandered the opportunity. But for Ibarra, it's nice to get a batting average. He's now one for five. Has that RBI from his first game, but just looking for any sign of momentum here. For the Blues, something to carry into the weekend. And now Ibarra's two for two with a base hit up the middle. The kid from two lanes getting it done. And the Blues have a one-out base runner. Good job so far, Ibarra. He's got two base hits today, both hard hit. And talking about those, those flyouts in the last inning, Jack, you know, they were flyouts, but they weren't the typical Blues flyouts or popouts we've been seeing throughout the years so far. I mean, they, they were struck well. Nin Burns got a little under his, but still hit pretty hard in that lineup by Schroeder. Thought it dropped at first, if I'm being honest. Burns has been hitting it pretty hard. That one was 97 miles an hour off the bat of Ibarra. Two good at-bats. You can go into a day 0 for 4 on the season, feeling super down about yourself, get two base hits, and then feel like you're Barry Bonds. 1-0. And Tollerman beats it into the ground towards short. This could be two. Toby takes it to the bag himself. A jump throw to first in time for the double play. The runner immediately erased for the Blues. We head to the top of the fifth. It's still 6-1. to one. We're back.
back here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. And the Blues are out for the top of the fifth inning. It's 6-1 Mudcats. Jack Smith alongside Nate Mills. And Nate, a really nice crowd again here at Sinsheimer Stadium. You were down on the field for the fireworks yesterday. And how were they? Were they as sparkly down there as they were up here? Oh, yeah. They're absolutely magical. Great moment at Sinsheimer last night. A lot of people showing out for the fireworks show. It's a great scene. Not as great a scene for the Blues here on the field today. It's been inconsistent play for them in this series. They looked rusty in the first game back on Friday. Looked pretty good yesterday outside of the calls that happened at third base. They got manager Dean Trainer tossed in the second inning, and it's been more of the inconsistent play today. And one ball and no strikes on Austin Russell, who has a walk, a stolen base, and a run today. And he's got five hits in the series. He's really done some damage to the Blues as Naren tries to get him out here to start the fifth. 2-0. That's upstairs. Three balls and no strikes. One thing the Blues have done today that has not really been the story for them this season, there have been more walks. Reynoso walked three in the second. All three of those runs came in to score. And now here's a walk to lead off the inning. That's the second straight inning that Naren, the pitcher, has walked the first batter and when it happened in the third, the run came around to score as well. So all four batters that the Blues have let on base via the B on, base on balls, all four of them come in to score. Yeah, that's what we talk about, giving out the free ones. If Reynoso doesn't walk those guys, maybe that inning goes a different way, but it's crucial not to give up free 90s. Sky-high pop-up on the infield. Ruley, the second baseman, calls off Schroeder and makes the catch for the out. But that's why... Especially two off, two out walks and lead off walks are pitching coach's, I guess, biggest enemies, worst nightmares. That's the thing that will upset a coach most is walking a guy with two outs or walking a guy to lead off an inning. Because then you're either setting the tone for an inning that the other offense can take advantage of, or you're just putting potential RBI on the base paths for the next batter to come up with two outs. A coach and a defense walking guys like that. It's easy to get flat footed as a defense. Pick to first is not in time to get Austin Russell. It's Nate Schwartz at the plate. He's one for two with a single. But you're right. You can get your defense to kind of fall into a lulled sleep behind you. And then all of a sudden there could be a hot shot grounder and the play might not be made because your defense has been waiting there for so long. Now the count is three balls and no strikes. You don't want to walk a runner in a scoring position as well. I, I think the, the key messaging is you just don't really want to walk guys in general, but there are certain spots where it does hurt a little bit more. Three balls, no strikes on Schwartz. And he fouls it. Potentially in play for Tollerman, the first baseman, but it bounces just past the Blues' dugout, three and one. Schwartz had the green light, trying to let it fly, but fouls it out of play. And the Mudcats seem to know what pitches they like and what pitches they don't like. We were talking about that 15 pitch at bat earlier from Tandy. And, and he was spit on ones he didn't like and swung at the ones he did. He spoiled them and fouled them off and earned himself a walk. And that's what kind of got the rally going for the Mudcats there in the second. Seeing more of the same here from Schwartz. He's spoiling off that fastball up in the zone. Didn't love it. Ballon with a full count here. That's out of play. So now a little bit of a battle brewing. You're right. It went from 3-0 to 3-2, and now Schwartz fouls that one off. Still three balls and two strikes. You know, walk definitely wouldn't be ideal, eliminating the double play. That would end the inning and put a runner in scoring position. Naren with a 3-2 count. Front foot a little bit offset. He kicks and deals. And that is lying down the right field line out of play. God, continuing to have good at bats. Spoiling away pitches. Let's see if it pays off here for Schwartz. All Naren's got to do is just make a good pitch. Don't throw it over the head. Don't spike it in the dirt. Let's make a good pitch here. This is your best pitch for Naren. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Is grounded towards third, and it's off the glove of Ricken and into left field. 
Austin Russell takes a big turnaround second, but he's going to stop there as the Blues might have had a chance to turn two, but JT Ricken couldn't glove it, and now there's runners at first and second with one out. Yeah, Jack, you're right. That was a perfect two-ball opportunity there, and Ricken's kicking himself because he knows he can make that play. He, got, he gets a nice hop, but just misjudges it. It goes over his glove, and now we got another runner in scoring position. We only got one out. Blues can still flip a double play here, though, if they get another ground ball. So I guess there's your silver lining. An error charge to Ricken at third, and you're right, still a double play ball in order. Now a runner takes off for third, and he steals it with ease. That's the third runner to steal today for the Solano Mudcats. They're just getting really nice jumps off Naren. I wonder if he's just not burying up his looks well enough back to second base. No, he's not. You're right. I, 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 I won't use that other school in L.A. for the timing mechanism we use as players. But you're right, Naren's not mixing up that timing at all. I'll just go seconds here. He puts the glove down at his belt buckle. One, two, home plate. Maybe one look at second. And the Mudcats are picking up on that. They're stealing bases left and right today. Russell's got two of the steals. He's at third now. And time is called by Caleb Jeske, the designated hitter. Or is a balk called? The runner at first, Schwartz, is halfway between first and second. I think he thought that the timeout was a bot call, but he returns back to the bag at first. And the count is two balls and no strikes. There's runners at the corners with one away. And that is down low. 3-0 and oh the count now. A walk would load the bases. The count is actually two balls and one strike. There was a change in the call, the first pitch. That's dribbled towards third. This could be a potential double play. Ricken goes for the tag at third base, and he doesn't, ta doesn't tag him, and Ricken again is in disbelief. And the Blues, if you watched yesterday's game, have real reason to be upset at some of these calls at third base, and Ricken threw his hand, head back immediately and did not believe the call. Oh, come on, man. Ricken absolutely got the tag on right there and that's good good heads up right there and would have been a nice makeup play for that ground ball he missed earlier but instead Dean Trainer angry once again he shouldn't have to do this so many times all of the questionable calls yesterday before Dean Trainer was thrown out in the second were at third base if you watched from early on Jacob Ruley tried to stretch a double to a triple looked from here as if he got under the tag was called out Trevor Schmidt was ruled that he did not tag up from third base. We went back and watched the highlight yesterday. The umpire at third was completely turned with his back facing third base. Had no shot at seeing whether Schmidt was going to tag. Trainer went out to argue, got tossed from the game in the second inning. After that, it felt like the Blues were on the wrong end of other calls as well, where it felt like the umpire and crew might have been sliding the Blues a little bit because of the drama that went on early in the game. And now another call at third base that the Blues believe they've been wronged on. And if it's not overturned, the bases will be loaded with one out. Yeah, it, it's incredible how many times it's happened even within this series. And some about third base and missing calls is something that's funny as well. And they call them safe. The Dean Trainer is now going to walk towards home plate. And I... I'm not sure I'd blame him if he gets thrown out for a second straight game. He does look a little bit more poised today. Yesterday was a lot more fiery. But he has been very upset by the way that this series has been umpired. And Ricken is now arguing with the umpire at third base. And if you're him, you thought you just made a big play where you erase the runner from third base with the tag. And again, the Blues feel like they're on the wrong side of things here at Sintrimer Stadium. Trainer walks off, not tossed today. But now it's a big spot. Bases loaded and one out. And for the Blues, where it felt like they're already down by five, what more could go wrong? You throw the umpiring back in the mix, and the Blues have not been happy with the way this series has gone. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Jack. They sort of feel like, what more do they have to do? They can't seem to have anything going their way. They're... Hit, the hitters are spoiling off pitches. The umpires aren't making the calls that need to get called. They're not getting strikes. They're walking guys. They're making errors. Well, naren has got a bear down either way. And he misses a little bit high with the fastball. 1-0. The batter is Max McGee. He's 0-2 with a strikeout today. He's been the only mud cat to strike out. 
The Blues have brought Tallerman in from first base, and Ricken is playing about even with the bag at third. And that's on the outside corner for a strike. McGee is one for seven in the series. Four strikeouts from San Joaquin Delta College. And still, if you get another ground ball, could be a double play for the Blues. They could come home to first. They could turn it across the diamond. They could go up the middle. A lot of opportunity. And that's fouled back. And we're going to learn about what kind of team the Blues are here with the bases juiced. You got a five-run deficit. You got the umpires going against you. We'll learn and see if they can take, take a deep breath, hit the reset button, straighten things out. One, two. That's outside. Two balls and two strikes. So far, it's just been one of those games for the Blues. But this could be the momentum they're looking for. If you can roll a double play here or get a couple big strikeouts, that could bring the momentum back to the bats where it feels like the Blues right now searching for anything to get some hype up in the dugout. There's still a long way to go in this game. But I think one thing's for certain. You can't allow any more runs here in the top of the fifth. 2-2. Two -two. That's in there. Strike three called on the inside corner. Two outs, and that's a big strikeout for an Aaron. Yeah, that's a nice slider that... Drops in there into the inner half of the zone. It's a little too close to take there for McGee. Usually that's a pitch the Mudcats have been swinging at, but he takes this one. You know, the Blues don't need to even roll a double play anymore. They can go anywhere with this one. Not out of the woods yet, as it's Hamburger at the plate, and that's in there for a strike. Hamburger is 0 for 1. He's walked and scored. One of the th three walks that came around to score back in the second. But Naren went out away from getting out of the inning and leaving the bases loaded. Hamburger skies it to right. Ibarra came in a little too far, now backs up and makes the catch. And that's exactly what Naren does. He strands the bases loaded. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. It is still Blues trailing by five. one do up for the Blues. Pemberton, Schroeder, and Burns as the Blues might have a little spark of momentum. Alec Naren had the bases loaded and one out on the mound. He got a strikeout and a flyout, and the Mudcats didn't score in the inning, and now the Blues will try and take it to the bats with Pemberton leading off, and he skies that out of play, so on one. Yeah, that's certainly some momentum that the offense could use. That's a great job by Naren, stranding the bases. They were loaded with one out, and he gets out of the jam unscathed, no runs across the board, and Pemberton continuing to swing at that first pitch, like that approach. 
That's outside. You're trying to bring defense to offense, or sometimes the momentum's not always started on the offensive side, but you do enough on the mound or out on defense, you can bring it over to the bats. 1-1 one, one count. That's on the outside corner for a strike. I think it's, you see it a lot in basketball where maybe a really good play on the defensive side, you transition it over across midcourt, make a good play on the offensive side, and you have momentum just like that. 1-2. And Pemberton beats it into the ground towards third. Russell's got to hurry. He throws on the run in time to get Luke Pemberton one out. Good 90 by Pemberton. Like that at bat. Would have liked him to see a little more pitches. Well, I did like that he was attacking early. I think now it's time for the Blues to sort of draw out their own at bats as well and get Varespi to throw some more pitches. Get him to work just a little more because they're making it a little too easy on the Mudcats. On defense, I'd like to see them work a little more at bats, and I know they can. Let's see if we can, if they can do that here, starting this inning. Forty-five pitches so far for Verespi, the starter. As he's got a 0-1 count on the nine-hole hitter, Augusto Schroeder, lined out to right field, back in the second. And now he swings, taps it back into the glove. A quick 0-2 count. Verespi, who's been hovering around the mid-80s with a fastball. We've also seen the breaking pitch right in the low 70s. So there is a decent amount of speed differential as he misses high. A guy doesn't always have to have the most overpowering stuff, but if you're having to pick between two speeds that are vastly different, it's sometimes hard to hit both. One, two. And Schroeder takes that strike three called. Uh, that's a good curveball in there. Loops in there, 12-6, buckles up, Schroeder. Clips the bottom half of the zone for strike three. Good sequencing by Verespi, and yeah, you're right. Jack, we haven't seen a ton of velo so far this summer, but we have seen pitchers that are able to locate it and mix in that off speed, just like that 12-6 curveball we saw right there. Buckles up Schroeder for out number two. With Nin Burns coming up, and there's two outs. Burns is... One for two. He had a big double in the first off the wall in right field. It looked like he put a similar swing on a ball to end the second inning, but it hung up for Indelicato, the right fielder. He's got a real nice right field approach working, though. He takes that outside. One ball and one strike. And then Burns, he's a slugger. Slugging 506 at Pomona last year and putting balls in the air today. This weekend, actually. Was there any reaction in the dugout when it was hit? Did anyone think it was gone? I thought it had a chance. Certainly a chance. It, hit it to a deep part of the yard, which makes it hard, but did hit it 350 feet, 97 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, that's deep. It, dugout did that thing where everyone stands up and looks at one time, so everyone certainly thought there was a chance. The Blues are still looking for their first homer of the season. This is tapped on the ground to third, and Burns beats it out. Throw goes down the right field line, and Nin takes off for second base. He's in there, and the Blues have a runner in scoring position with two outs. That's why that speed tool is so valuable. Nin Burns collects a base hit, has to make Austin Russell rush his throw. He thought he had more time to get it there. Rushes it, spikes it in the dirt, goes towards the bullpen, and Burns is able to Head towards second, and now there's a runner in scoring position for Ruley. The official ruling is a single and an error on the third baseman, Russell, on the bad throw. Burns was beating that out either way, but the throw allows him to get to second base. And now, if you're the Blues trying to chip away in this game, Ruley trying to bring in a run with two outs. And now would be a good start to start chipping away. Rolls it on the ground to short. Toby's up with it. The long throw across the diamond is in time to get Ruley. So the Blues waste the base runner in scoring position. We head to the top of the sixth inning. It is still 6-1. Solano.
some strange evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. Welcome back to Sinsheimer Stadium, where the Solano Mudcats are leading the San Luis Obispo Blues 6-1. to one. We're here in the top of the sixth inning, just did the tennis ball throwing contest. Still nobody has made it in the bucket. I'm a little disappointed. I want to see someone make it in the bucket. We're seeing it hit the rim, and we're also seeing it hit the net and not even make it onto the field. And I want to ask you, Jack, what would what would hurt the soul more if you were participating? Would it, would it hurt more to not even get it on the field or to get so close? I think it would hurt the soul to get close but not make it. But I think it would hurt the ego to not get it on the field. I'm not sure I'd ever come back from that. Well said. Yeah, the ego damage is real there. I think I'd even have to agree with you on that one. A new pitcher into the game for the San Luis Obispo Blues who trailed by five. It's Marcelo Saldana making his first appearance of the summer from CSU Bakersfield. He had a 6.38 earned run average for the Roadrunners this past season. Made two starts across 18 appearances, 36 and two-thirds innings. The six-foot, 190-pound left-hander from Clovis, California is out on the mound for the Blues. We had a chance to talk with Saldana a little bit yesterday, and we talked with Jacob Ruley, who's also from CSU Bakersfield, about Saldana, and he was impressed Ruley was about the way that Saldana threw for the Roadrunners this season. Really liked the stuff that he's throwing out there. Yeah, different look here from the Blues. Got a hard throwing left hander. Seems like we're seeing a lot of soft tossers from the left side so far for this summer, but that slider's got some good movement to it. Fastball's not flat. So we'll see if Saldana can give the Blues a chance here and hold down the Mudcats for now. The fastball's mid-80s. The slider is just about 73, 74 miles per hour. And he faces the bottom of the order, then back to the top for the Solano Mudcats. Alec Nava, the nine-hole spot. And then Braden Delicato, the leadoff man. Tyler Toby, the two-hole hitter. And the Blues are just trying to keep this as close as possible as they hope the bats can wake up down the stretch of this game. It's 6-1 Mudcats. And for the Blues, it feels like there's just not a lot of momentum on their side. Nava flies the first pitch to right center field. Ibarra chases it into the gap, puts his glove up, and makes the head-high catch for the first down. One pitch, one out. And that's how Saldana's summer gets started. A good first pitch. One pitch, one out. On track for efficiency. Good route by there by Ibarra to make the one-handed snag on the move for out number one. Back to the top of the order, Braden and Delicato has three runs batted in today on that double back in the second that opened this game up. In total, he's one for three. Although the other two outs he's made, both were line outs. He lined out to shortstop to lead off the game and then flew out to left his last time up. Saldana, the lefty, kicks and deals and gets a big swing and a miss on the fastball. It's 0-2. Saldana, previously a freshman All-American at Fresno City College back in 2020. He's bounced around to different spots, and he's played at the D1 level the past two years. 0-2, and there's a ground ball back up the middle from Indelicato, past the diving Ruley, the second baseman, and Indelicato's got an 0-2 base hit. And Mudcats continue to wear out that hole up the middle of the infield, and they get another base runner here with one out. So Saldana went back in the zone, 0-2, and Delicato made him pay. He's 2-4, for four, and there's speed on the base baths. Tyler Toby coming up, 1-3 for three today with a single back in the first inning. And he inside outs one out to center field. Ninburns is over in the right center field gap and puts his glove up to make the catch, two away. And Mudcats seeing it well. They're attacking early in their at-bats so far against Saldana. And Saldana's not new to summer ball. He spent last summer pitching for the Humboldt Crabs. He had a really good season, too. A 1.89 ERA in 47 and two-thirds innings pitched. 
as that's upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Had seven wins in nine starts. The batter is Austin Russell, and he lines that one back to the screen. Russell has walked twice. He's got two stolen bases. He's scored a run, but in all, he's 0 for 1 after grounding into a double play to end the first inning. But he's easily been the best hitter in the series. Got five hits, and he's got a sixth as that drops in front of Ibarra, who thought about picking up and throwing to first, but instead dishes it into second base, and that's two hits in the inning. Runners at first and second with two away. It looks like Saldana tried to mix in a changeup right there that caught the bottom half of the zone. Russell goes down and gets it for his first base hit of the day. Not necessarily hit hard, it's kind of blooped into right field, but nonetheless, the first hit of the day. And Mudcats have another runner on scoring position. Russell's reached base three times already in the sixth inning. And here's Jake Tandy, who's reached twice, and he takes it low. Tandy singled back in the third inning. It's his lone hit. Eventually came all the way around to score. There was an error that allowed him to advance to second. He's got a walk, and he's got a pop out. He's 1-0 oh for 1. Scored two runs as well, two of the six that the Humboldt, or that the Solano Mudcats have put up as that's out of play, 1-1. One and one. Saldana looking to get the Blues back in the dugout, get the bats back to work. Here's the 1-1, one, one. and that's upstairs. Two balls and one strike. Saldana saw a big increase in innings this past year at CSU Bakersfield. Tossed three and a third back in 2022, but a 33-inning increase on the bump. So, of course, the coaching staff getting more comfortable with their left-hand arm, and he had a, a pretty good year. Had the 29 strikeouts and 36 and two-thirds, and for his first time pitching bulk innings at the Division I level, 6-3-8 ERA is nothing to scoff at, especially when you're asking him to be a Swiss Army knife and start some games and relieve other games. 3-1, and that's in there for a strike. And this is in a year of the Big West baseball coming back alive. A lot of good teams in that conference. Long Beach, Irvine, Fullerton, UCSD. A lot of challenges. Payoff pitch to Tandy is, in fact, a toss back to second. We have not seen many pickoff moves for the Blues so far this summer. But with the rate at which the Mudcats are stealing today, it makes sense to check on the runner at second. Both runners will be on the move with a 3-2 count and two outs. Payoff offering. And Tandy climbs the ladder and fouls it back. The runners are in Delicato at second. Good speed for the right fielder. Austin Russell, who's got good speed as well, is at first. Another 3-2. And a swing and a miss on the inside corner. First strikeout for Saldana for the Blues this summer. And two more runners stranded for the Mudcats. The Blues are keeping it close. Can they come up and score? We're to the bottom of the six. We'll find out the answer.
realize there's some strange evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today. Back here in the bottom of the sixth, the Blues trail by a score of 6-1 to one on the Slow Blues streaming network. They've got the heart of the order coming up, though. It's Trevor Schmidt to lead it off, then JT Ricken and Jake Bold against Varespi, who's back out for the sixth. As Schmidt takes outside. As I said earlier, Blues got to make Varespi work, make it a little too easy on him. He's cruising as he enters to the sixth inning now. As Schmidt hits a high towering shot towards center field. Not quite deep enough as McGee's got it with room to spare. And that's the first out of the inning. I just missed that one. Just got under it. Schmidt knows that he was only maybe even a matter of half centimeters away from hitting that off the baseball 395 in center. He's flown out to center the last two times. So it shows you he does have a good approach working middle away across the diamond. Had that RBI single back in the first. That's the only run the Blues have scored as Ricken swings and misses. No one won the count on the redshirt freshman from Oregon who takes that in the dirt. Huge ricochet back to the dugout. It's one and one. Ricken so far today has reached on a fielder's choice in the first and struck out. He's 0 for 2. Varespi back into his windup, and he misses low again. Two balls and one strike, but you're right. You, you eventually get to this point in the game where it's kind of the middle innings, and if pitcher's still going and going well, they can really catch a groove and toss deep into the game. Yeah, try something new, maybe throw down a bunt at some point in the inning, but being a little more picky with pitches right there is Rickens making him throw a little more, and he gets himself in a nice 3-1 count. Good job spitting those two balls in the dirt and that fastball away right there. Three and one the count on Ricken. Blues looking for any sign of life, and they'll take a base runner via a walk. Three one. And that's upstairs. It's exactly what Ricken does. He reaches first on the base on balls, and the Blues bring up Jake Bold with a runner at first. Good chance here for Bold to introduce himself, maybe move the runner over. Maybe add on a base runner, maybe get himself a walk. Eliminate a double play. That would end the inning. Bold is 0 for 2. Struck out in the first. Grounded out his last time up. And he takes a strike. The zone today has been really good, I feel. with the. It feels like both corners are being called. The bottom and top of the zone. There's a clear defining mark. And it's been very solid both ways. And I think when you total out... Everything that's gone on this weekend as Bold taps it towards third, and he's tossed out at first by the third baseman, Russell, in time. I think when you add everything up throughout this whole weekend and definitely throughout the whole season for the Blues, the, the umpiring has, has been really good and very solid. And the Blues just have some complaints, I think, about some plays at third, but, you know, umpiring is definitely hard. But you feel like... For the majority of the summer, it's it's gone both ways. The Blues, I think, just feel like they're on the wrong side of something today. As Varespi looks like he might be beat up a little bit on the mound. And the Mudcat coaching staff going out to check him up. Did you see anything on that last play? I didn't see anything there. Just watched the throw and saw Varespi squatting down next to the mound. I thought he started to squat down when he saw the coach coming out. As to say, like, no, I'm not done. I want to keep going. But there is going to be a call to the bullpen here. And Varespi, all of a sudden, is out of this game. He'd been dominating. It looks like it might be the left foot or ankle, but he's making the uncomfortable walk back to the dugout. And we're going to have a pitching change here at Sinsheimer Stadium, so Varespi is done. There's a runner at second for the Blues. A left-hander's coming in. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the Slow Blues Streaming Network.
but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. It's the left-hander Karen Casey in to face Corbin Ibarra, and all of a sudden the Blues have knocked the starter Stephen Verespi out of the game. We're not exactly sure still whether it was due to some kind of injury or it was just his time to come out of the game, but the left-hander Karen Casey is in. The Blues are bringing Corbin Ibarra up to the dish. He's two for two, and the Blues could potentially bring in a run and draw a little bit closer here. Runner at second is JT Ricken after he walked and advanced on the fielder's choice. And Ibarra hits a line drive into right field. It drops in front of Indelicato. Ricken's getting the wave. He comes in to score. Corbin Ibarra's three for three, and it's 6-2. Uh, have a day for the green wave. First pitch he sees in the at-bat. Brings home Ricken, who's got incredible speed. The Blues tack on one right away. Well, Corbin Ibarra... Is three for three with three singles, and you're right, he jumped on that first pitch out of the pen. And now the Blues have seven hits in the game. They only have two runs, but creeping a little bit closer. Here's Zach Tollerman, and he takes a fastball a little bit low. One ball and no strikes. And that fastball's jumping out of the hand there. Coming in there in the high 80s. So the Blues seeing some velocity. But sometimes you rather face the velocity than some of the junk stuff. And Verespi had been so dominant throughout this game that I think they're just welcoming of any new arm. Yeah, and this arm, not a lot of life to it. It seems like a pretty flat fastball that the Blues should be jumping on as Ibarra just did there. Tollerman has a single, and he's grounded into a double play. That single back in the second was his third hit of the summer. 2-1. And he watches it low. Three balls and one strike. If we were to reach here with two away, Luke Pemberton from Pepperdine, the left fielder, is in the on-deck circle, but it actually might be a pinch hitter that was just sent out. Jason Hansen's in the on-deck circle now. As Tollerman tries to check his swing, and he did. That's a walk for Zach Tollerman, his eighth of the summer. And all of a sudden, the Blues have two base runners with two outs, and it is going to be Hansen to pinch hit for Pemberton. Gotta love that pendulum. Never gets old. We got Hansen coming up. Runner at second base. And Ibarra with some good speed. Just place a single into right field. Would be nice for the Blues. Two out rally. Hansen, we would assume, is going to go into left field. The Yuba College Male Athlete of the Year. He was awarded that at the end of April. And so far for the Blues in 11 at-bats, he has one hit two walks and two runs batted in. I think the big key for Hansen is he has not really struck out this summer. Only one strikeout in 13 times coming to the plate. Tollerman aboard on the walk. The Blues have already scored a run in this inning to draw a little bit closer. They hungry for more with two runners on and two outs. Casey delivers and Hansen takes a slider on the outside corner 0-1. He's got a lot of work with on that right side. Big gap between the second and first baseman. We'll call that the four hole. He's working that opposite field. Fastball's been picking away there. We see it right there. Tried to go outer half of the zone and missed it for a ball, but that's what we've been seeing so far from Casey. See if Hansen can keep that right field approach that commonly work on BP. And that's high and out. Two balls and one strike. The Blues have really good speed at second base in Corbin Ibarra. The trail runner is Zach Tollerman at first. As Hansen looks to extend the inning, two balls and one strike. Here's the pitch, and that's outside as well. Casey's in danger of walking his second straight hitter and loading the bases for the nine-hole hitter Augusto Schroeder, who stands on deck. Three and one the count. Hansen's just looking for one pitch to drive and bring in more runs. The pitch... And he cues it foul down the first baseline, three and two. You can see there that his mind is clearly trying to go that way. Not sure if that pitch was in the zone enough, especially at 3-1 to, to go after it. You're in a better spot there to take a look at it, but I like, I like the aggressiveness. 3-2. Hansen lines it in the gap in left center field. This might score two runs. Here comes one. 
as Corbin Ibarra touches home. Dollarman's being waved in. The ball's still kicking around the left field wall. Hampson's dives. He's got a triple. It's 6-4. Out of baby, Jason Hansen. We've talked about it before, pinch hitting, one of the most difficult things to do in baseball, if not the most difficult. He gets into a full count. He's got two outs, runner in scoring position, and he comes through. That's a nice piece of hitting in the left center gap. That clears the bases. He's got himself a triple. Out a baby. A pinch hit triple for Jason Hansen, and all of a sudden, it's a two-run game. The Mudcat... Coaching staff out to check on Karen Casey. That is such a big hit for the Blues. They'd stranded a handful of base runners, but they make the Mudcats pay for the free 90s. A couple hits in the inning now, and the Blues have scored three runs. And it looks like Casey's going to stay in this game. He'll face Augusto Schroeder. If Schroeder can get a base hit or extend the inning, the Blues could bring themselves within one run. And this is why... The pitching was such a big deal for the Blues to keep it close, putting up three zeros over these past three innings. You figured the bats might eventually bust out or they might get a little bit of a break from some free 90s by the Mudcat pitching staff, and that's what's happened here in the frame. Jason Hansen with a huge two RBI pinch hit triple. Absolutely huge, and those walks, once again, coming into, the, into play. Two of those runs that scored got on base via the walk, and it's just it's the free 90s are very important in games like this and in any game that's a nice stop by Schwartz to keep Jason Hansen at third the ball was kicked around a little bit in the outfield and that allowed Hansen to get all the way around to third base with the triple but two runs scored with ease 1-0 and Schroeder takes it low two balls and no strikes and Casey it seems a little flustered by the situation and he's lost all essence of the strike zone it's two balls and no strikes I'd say you come in right away, and the first guy you see clears the bases for a triple. Yeah, that'll do it. As that misses outside, three balls and no strikes. A walk here would bring the go-ahead run to the plate, and Nin Burns, the leadoff hitter, and Schroeder, who's had a tough season so far. He's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. If he can draw a walk, he'd put himself on board as the tying run. 3-0, and that's high and tight. A four-pitch walk. And now it's runners at first and third, and then Burns coming to the plate, and we'll see if that was the last hitter for Casey. So Casey's staying in this game. The Mudcats are sticking with the left-hander from Contra Costa College. And the Blues are trying to make them pay in this inning. Still not over. The Mudcat searching for the third out, and Nin Burns, who has two hits today, including a rocket double, comes to the dish and watches the fifth straight ball, a little bit low, 1-0. Burns trying to find a gap and tie this game. Casey kicks and fires, and misses inside, or right there on the inside corner, rather, for a strike, 1-1. One one. That was borderline, but just caught the inside corner. It's a good pitch, right on the black, I'd say. Burns up on the plate, always did that as a player, standing right up, nearly kicking off the chalk. 1-1, one, one. and Burns checks his swing on a breaking ball. Did he go? No, here's the throw to second, and Schroeder takes the bag. Two runners in scoring position for the Blues, and the potential tying run is 180 feet away at second. It's a great read by Schroeder right there. Ball and dirt reads, you work on it all the time in practice. I know that one well maybe too much time, clearly Schroeder has as he gets a great jump on that ball in dirt, swipes second base. Now a single might tie this game. Casey delivers, and Burns watches it low and outside. Three balls and one strike. A walk would load the bases for Jacob Ruley, who came into today hitting 333, but is 0 for 3 on the ball game today. Big hitter's count for one of the Blues' best sluggers. Here's the pitch, and that is outside. Another walk, and the Blues have the bases loaded with two away. Got to say this weekend so far, great defense by catchers on both sides. A lot of blocked balls, a lot of reaching out to their right to prevent balls from hitting the backstop. Got to tip my cap to catchers for both the Mudcats and the Blues this weekend. 
They are good eggs, as we talked about earlier. <laughs> Tyler Toby, the shortstop, is checking in with the lefty. Gives him a pat on the chest and says, hey, why don't you go get this final out for us? You still got it. The Mudcats still do lead by two, but this is a dangerous situation where the Blues could tie or take the lead. Jacob Ruley, the two-hole hitter at the dish. Casey has walked the last two batters, and the last four Blues hitters have reached. Yeah, less than ideal day so far for Ruley. Great opportunity here to turn that around. Can erase it all with one swing, and he watches a change up high and outside for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. That's the thing, too. and it, If you're having a day and you're a strikeout away from Golden Sombr a Sombrero, which is four strikeouts, but you can come through with a clutch double here that can clear the bases. It erases it all. That is on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. The runners are Hanson at third. He tripled in two runs. Augusto Schroeder walked and took second base on a ball in dirt. He's at second, and Nin Burns, the fastest man on the team, is at first. One, one, and a big swing and a miss from Ruley. Tardy on the fastball, and it's one and two. Now you got to shorten up with two strikes. Put something in play and make the Mudcats make a play on defense if you're Jacob Ruley. And the runners will run with the crack of the bat. One, two. And Ruley fights it off. Foul. He was late again, but caught a piece. And the count's still one ball and two strikes. He was late, but clearly some adjustment was made. We can see him choking up on the bat there. Fouls that one off. Keeps himself in it. Choked up with two. Trying to put it in play. One, two pitch. And he fights it off. Foul again. Fly ball down the right field line. It's one and two still. Ruley from CSU Bakersfield. Struck out 20 times in 32 games for the Roadrunners, and he watches that one upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. It's a good take right there. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Three runners on, and the Blues trail by two. The pitch, and Ruley beats it into the ground. The pitcher, Casey, comes up with it, and he throws wide. Bends over. Just past the mound and watches his throw fly past the glove of Schwartz, the catcher. It took him off the mound, and the Blues score at 6-5. They get a gift. Wow, some, some luck for the Blues here, and that pendulum continues to swing on the side of San Luis Obispo. Casey rushes this throw and babies it to home plate, air mails it, and the Blues bring up their best hitter of the summer so far with the bases loaded and down by one. Real long leash for Casey who just squandered a tailor-made opportunity to get out of this inning. Still bases loaded and Schmidt takes a fastball for a strike. Casey's staying out there. The Blues with a chance to really make this inning hurt for the Mudcats by tying or taking the lead with their best hitter at the plate. Casey shakes, now has his sign. He deals, and Schmidt fouls it back, a quick 0-2 count. Schmidt led off the inning by flying out to center, so the Blues have batted around. It's Schroeder at third, Nin Burns at second, and Jacob Ruley is at first. 0-2, and Schmidt takes that one off the outside corner. Casey thought it was strike three with a count, one ball and two strikes. Yeah, that was a good placement there on that fastball. Schmidt should keep his approach here. Gaps are huge here at Sinsheimer. 1-2, and Schmidt rolls it to second. This could be the end of the inning. Nava boots it, and a run comes in to score. Here comes the go-ahead run, and the throw goes off the Mudcats dugout and bounces in foul territory. The Blues score three times on the error by the second baseman. It's 8-6 Blues. This is exactly what the Blues needed to happen. Can tell the boys are absolutely buzzing in the dugout right now. Right now, Everything that needed to go their way is currently going their way. A nightmare inning. And Trevor Schmidt on the ground ball ends up at third base. I think the throw bounced in and out of the dugout for the Mudcats. And the Blues come in to score. My scorebook is in shambles. And the Blues have plated seven runs here. It's 8-6. They enter trailing by five. They're up by two. And the inning's not over. Here's JT Ricken, who beats it up the middle, right into the glove of Casey. Makes extra time with this throw and underhand flips for the out. 
We head to the to the top of the seventh inning, and the Blues have their first lead since the first. It is 8-6 San Luis Obispo. Well, this game's been flipped on its head. The Blues lead it 8-6 to six in the top of the seventh inning. They plated seven runs on a bunch of walks, a couple hits, and some questionable errors by the Mudcats, ones you just do not see very often. The Blues had gifted them ground balls to get out of the inning, and the Mudcats couldn't make the play. And now the Blues lead by two, appeal to first, and the hitter Schwartz did not swing. It's one ball and no strikes. Schwartz is one for three. He singled and reached on an air. He takes that one for a strike. And now all of a sudden, the Mudcats are back in the dugout, and now they have work to do to come back from this deficit. And deja vu from Friday night. The On Friday, all with two outs, the Mudcats scored seven runs in the sixth inning, and today the Blues did the exact same thing and now lead at 8-6. 2-1, and that's outside. Marcelo Saldana behind in the count now 3-1 and one on Nate Schwartz. Death, taxes, the two-out rally. And the seven-run sixth inning, apparently. 3-1. That's in there, and foul out of play. Three balls and two strikes. So Saldana goes from pitching in a game where he was like, right, I'm just going to work on my stuff. We're down by five. So now all of a sudden he's got to try and protect a lead. Doesn't want to walk the first hitter of the inning with a 3-2 count. He kicks and fires and misses upstairs for the leadoff walk. Not what you want to see if you're manager Dean Trainer after your team just put up seven runs. Now the tying run comes to the plate in the form of Caleb Jeske. Yeah, and once again, that pendulum, while it is in the court of San Luis Obispo, they got to do everything in their power to make sure it doesn't swing back. And that's what they're going to do here in the final third. So Jeske comes up now. He's hit into two fielder's choices, but he's also walked and scored. That was back in the second. He's 0 for 2, and he takes that low. It bounces off Bold, the catcher. The runner advances, and now it's the runner in scoring position with nobody out. So. Yeah, Blues just defense. Just got to play some catch. Don't try to do too much, especially on a play like that. Just take a deep breath, play catch, make the play. Pass ball lets the runner move into scoring position. And now Nate Schwartz, the catcher, is at second. For the other catcher, DHing today and Jeske. 1-0. And Jeske rolls it towards the third base line. The Blues try and let it roll foul, and it does at the last second. And it's one ball and one strike. Smart heads-up defensive play from the pitcher, Saldana. Hey, good job letting it go there. Sometimes the ball can have some weird spin, though. We've seen it. You get that swinging bunt, it just hugs the foul line. It never goes foul, but good job by Rickon and Saldana letting that one just roll foul. So all of a sudden, the Blues 
went from looking like they might lose their first series of the summer to now a chance to win the rubber match here on Sunday in what's been a crazy series. 1-1. One, one. And that is flown to right field. Chasing it towards the line is the right fielder Ibarra. He crosses into foul territory and makes the one-handed catch for the first out. Good snag by Ibarra. And again, tough play. I talk about it all the time. Played right field primarily in my career. And those balls that float like that down the right field line have the tendency to slice. And it's, it's harder than it looks to play balls like that. And Ibarra does a good job getting underneath it and squeezing it for out number one. The batter now is Max McGee. Two looking strikeouts and a ground out. He's 0 for 3. And make it 1 for 8 on the weekend so far with five strikeouts. My heart's racing is yours. Oh, it is. I'm shaking writing this down. No balls, one strike with one out in the inning. The runner at second is Schwartz, who walked to lead off the frame. Saldana from the stretch delivers. And that's a foul ball off the netting, 0-2. Could be the exciting inning or the honey I had before this inning, too. We'll have to talk about that another day. I mean, it would have made more sense with the Blues trailing by five to be telling some stories. But now I'm, I'm locked in on this game. It's a two-run game now. The Blues have a lead. Crazy inning, 0-2. And that is inside, and it hit him. McGee is hit with the 0-2 pitch, and the tying run is aboard. Okay, so you get the tying run up. Hit a guy with a pitch. Not a situation you want to be in here, but you do have one out. There is now a runner on first base, which means you just get a ground ball here. You can just flip it to second, go to first for a double play, and you're out of this. Seems like some wishful thinking, but definitely possible as always. There's a liner down the right field line, hooking, curling, foul. As Nate Hamburger tried to try that right field line, might have had extra bases if it landed fair and would have tied this game, but it's 0-1. The Blues turned a double play in the first inning. They also turned a double play in the third. We're a long way since then, as that's in the dirt, one ball and one strike. This game has taken a while. It's We're just about two and a half hours in, and we're here just in the top of the seventh inning. One ball, one strike, one out. Saldana looking in at Hamburger. He kicks and fires. And Hamburger takes a fastball a little bit too high, 2-1. and one. Not bad there, Saldana trying to attack. Climb the ladder, go the upper half of the zone with that fastball. Trying to challenge the hitter and Hamburger. Just misses upstairs. 2-1. That's down low. What you don't want to do is walk the bases loaded and give the Mudcats a chance to rally back just a half inning after you put up seven runs. But Saldana was sitting for a while. Sometimes it's hard to go back out there after such a long wait. 3-1. It's a fly ball on the infield. Tollerman chases it back to the netting, but it bounces behind the Blues' dugout. Three balls and two strikes. Saldana, this past season, walked 31 batters in 36 and two-thirds innings. More walks than strikeouts this past year for the Roadrunners. But this, is, this would be a bad spot for a base on balls. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Another K for Marcelo Saldana. And there's two outs. Great job, Saldana, right there. He places a fastball on the outer black, gets Hamburger to chase at it. Way bigger swing than usual, and he gets out number two in a big spot. Job's not finished, though. Alec Nava, who's been hot today, is at the dish now. Two singles, he scored a run, he's two for three. He spoils that one off towards the right side. It's 0-1-1. A hit here would extend the inning. Might bring in a run with Schwartz at second base. And it would turn the lineup card over to the top of the order in Braden and Delicado, who has two hits and three runs batted in today. The Blues want to avoid him coming up this inning. And that's in there for strike two. One strike away are the Blues from getting out of this inning and maintaining their two-run lead. 
Saldana pins his glove to the front side of that gray San Luis uniform. Now he holds his, holds his glove at the belt. He delivers. And it misses high. Appeal to first, no swing. One ball and two strikes. Again, the idea is there. Just got to execute it. Misses up just a little bit. Wanted to climb the ladder once again. Make Nava chase at it. Still an opportunity to do so with a one ball, two strike count. He strides and shoots. And he breaks a bat towards third on the grounder. Ricken throws to first base, and Nava wasn't sure whether to run or not. The lumber shatters, and the Blues get out of the inning. Saldana thought about keeping the handle, but he tosses it to Nava. We head to the bottom of the seventh, and the Blues still lead by two here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. nursing a lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning and they bring up Jake Bold against the new right-hander Jasper Dalton Recht who's into his windup and dishes in a strike. It's 0-1 on the catcher from Princeton making his Blues debut today. He's 0-3 with a strikeout with the Blues last inning scored seven runs in the bottom of the sixth and now another shard of the bat is found. Marcelo Saldana created some firewood out of the bat of Alec Nava to get a ground out to strand two runners at the end of the top of this inning. Here's the 0-1 to Bold. And that is upstairs, one ball and one strike. The Blues just want to add some insurance now if they found themselves in the lead. They were able to do so yesterday and win by two, and if they do so today, they'll take a victory in this rubber match and win the series against the Mudcats. What a turn of events here at Sinsheimer Stadium where the Blues went from trailing by five to leading by two in a chaotic way with the defensive errors muddling up last inning for the Mudcats. And now a three and one count on Bold trying to reach base for the first time as a Blue. Here's a 3-1 from Dalton Recht, and Bold takes it low. A leadoff walk for the San Luis Obispo Blues, and there's a runner at first with nobody out. Good leave by Bold. Gets on first. Now he has an on-base percentage for the first time with San Luis Obispo. Well, and you're getting on for the right guy. Corbin Ibarra is 3-for-3 three three with three singles. He came into the game 0 for 4 on the summer and now three base hits, including a big one last inning that plated a run for the Blues up the middle. Rex deals 0-0. -oh -oh. 
And Ibarra watches it to the backstop. Going to second is Jake Bold. And the Blues have a runner in scoring position with nobody out. Yeah, I was going to say, too, with a catcher on first, you're not necessarily looking at a lot of speed, but the Mudcats give Bold a free 90 on that pass ball. Even when it kicked off that small little concrete part of the backstop, which is 90% netting, still gets to second base easily. 1-0. And Ibarra spins back out of the way of that fastball. It's two balls and no strikes. Coaches love to see him turn on that. A lot of times, players all the way up to the big leagues won't turn on the ball, but rather jump out of the way. Barra turns the shoulder. We actually worked on this at Palomar College last year. We had a hit-by-pitch drill, which we had tennis balls in the hack attack. We just shot him at other players. Ouch. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. At least they were tennis balls. 2-0. And Ibarra watches it in the dirt. It clanks off the mask of Schwartz, the catcher, and another 90-foot mistake. Jake Bold is 90 feet away from giving the Blues another run. That was easy for San Luis Obispo. Now you got Bold 90 feet away. Ibarra needs to put it in the air. It's, he's in the 2-0 count. He's in a hitter's count in the right spot here. Three balls, no strikes. Looking for a walker knock here with nobody away. The pitch. And Dalton wrecked, misses way far outside. Two walks to open up the inning. And now runners at the corners with nobody out. So Schwartz is going to go talk to the big tall right-hander, making his first appearance on the summer. It was Verespi who was dealing through five and a third innings. Came out of the game. We're still not exactly sure why. Karen Casey came in, and things started to unravel for the Mudcats. He's... Not in this inning, obviously, as Dalton Recht has taken over. But the Blues have flipped the script here on Mimosa Sunday, a rubber match Sunday, in game three of this three-game series. Now they have a real chance to add on to their lead and make it a more comfortable advantage heading into the eighth inning. Zach Tollerman is up to the dish now. He's reached base twice today, scored once. He's got an RBI. Here's the OO. And Tollerman watches it low and inside. One ball and no strikes. Dalton wrecked, trying to find the zone. Oh, those base on balls. Blues got to find a way to capitalize on those free 90s once again. Both the runners on got on via walk. Tollerman takes a big hack and fouls it just on a slight tap back to the screen, one and one. Looking for some insurance are the Blues. Tollerman had that walk and run scored back in the sixth. Picked to first, and Ibarra's back in with a dive. Dirtying up the gray San Luis uniforms. You told me these are your favorite that the Blues wear? Yeah, here's my favorite. Love the San Luis scripture on there, the throwback feel. I know you're a big pinstripe guy, but I like these too. 1-1. One, one. And Tollerman watches it bounce way high back to the backstop. It bounces off the netting, and the Blues bring another run in. A bunch of mistakes here for the Mudcats. As the count moves to 2-1, and one, Jake Bold comes in to score, and it is 9-2, nine, 9-6 nine, Blues. There's the free ones. The Blues didn't even need to swing the bat, and they've put up a run here in the seventh inning to make it 9-6. Chance for more, too. Two balls and one strike. Ibarra moved up to second as well. On the wild pitch. 2-1 offering. And that is a little bit low on the breaking ball. Three balls and one strike. When Recht is missing, he is missing by a large margin. We have already seen three wild pitches in the inning. As well as two walks. 3-1. And Tollerman skies it foul. Right to our left, the count three and two. He let out some wood with a three ball, one strike count. Payoff on the way. And Tollerman bends back out of the way. Another one back to the backstop. And again, the Blues first and, sec first and third, nobody out. And you see a left-hander and a right-hander starting to get ready for the Mudcats. 
You see Ibarra taking off towards third right there. Had a good heads up. Didn't go for home, but was definitely thinking about it. Looked like the catcher and Tandy was taking his time back there. Was thinking about it, but didn't quite go. It's a good heads up base run, though, from Ibarra. Now the batter is Jason Hansen. He's had one at bat and hit a pinch hit, two RBI triple. Tollerman takes off for second. There's no throw, and he's got second base with without a play. And the count is one ball and no strikes. Two runners in scoring position now for the Blues. Second night in a row that Tollerman has swiped a bag. And now a 1-0 count on Hanson, who already has two runs batted in on that huge triple. Liner to center. This might drop in front of McGee. It does. He plays it on a hop, and it's by him. This will roll all the way to the wall, and Hansen's got a chance for four bags. He's around second, heading to third, and he's in. Two more runs in for the Blues. It's 11-6. Are you kidding me? Jason Hansen gets a fastball, pelts it up the middle. Great hitting right there. And the center fielder in Jeske... He's got to pick a way. He's either got to let it drop in front of him or he's either got to go and try to make the catch. I would err towards the side of letting it drop in front of him. Because if you try to be the hero and you try to dive for it and you miss the dive, what happens right there happens. But it would be better to go that way than kind of being stuck in the middle. And the Blues have scored 10 runs across the last two innings. There's still nobody out here. And now four errors on the board for the Mudcats. That's been the story of this game. As Dalton Recht looks in now at Augusto Schroeder and pelts him in the back. Schroeder takes first base. Three walks in the inning. A single and an error. And now a hit by pitch. And again, runners at first and third. Nobody out. And this is getting ugly. Well, meeting at the mound is incoming. We'll see if that's the end for Recht. It's been a tough inning. He walked the first batter bold. Walked Ibarra and Tollerman as well. Four wild pitches in that mix. Gave up the single in the air to Hansen, and then just hit Schroeder with the first pitch of the at-bat. And the tall right-hander from College of the Canyons is having a nightmare inning. This is why you don't give up. And the Blues needed a break. They've gotten it over the past couple innings, and they've taken full advantage Nate, have you ever seen anything like this? Ten runs in two innings, and the Blues don't even have many hits. No, it, it this game, day and night, it's, it feels like we've played two different games today. It's the dramatic change in events for the Blues. Loving to see that here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. But no, this is one of the more unique things I've seen happen. Well, we hope you didn't check out at home. The Blues now lead it by five, the exact amount that they trailed by heading into last inning. And there's still nobody out with two runners aboard for Nin Burns, who looks at a slider on the black for a strike. It's 0-1-1. Hansen's at third, Schroeder's at first, and Burns is two for three with a walk as well and a big double back in the first. 0-1. And Racked misses in the dirt with the fastball, 1-1. One and one. Are you seeing any mechanical issues for Recht? What's the deal as to why his command has eluded him in this inning? It's just clearly looking like a release point problem to me. He's, he's skipping it or he'll kind of cut across his body and, and pull the ball a bit. He's just got to find that release point. Burns takes another slider. This is outside, 2-1. and one. And to me, yeah, it goes back to that slider. So he went first pitch slider on that after not being able to control that fastball. It's interesting why I went back there. I mean, he didn't he didn't yank or anything. Like that one barely missed the zone. First one did hit the zone. Two one to Burns. It's the fastball again, and he has to back out of the way. Three and one. A walk would load the bases for Jacob Ruley, who had an eventful AB his last time up, and we'll talk about that when we get there. First off, it's Burns though in a hitter's count. This game has completely flipped on its head. 3-1. And Burns beats it in the ground towards third. Throw goes to second, and it's by the second baseman, Nava. Another run comes in to score for the Blues. The fifth error for the Mudcats. It's still first and third, nobody out, and it's 12-6. to 
Yeah, errors have been the story of the game for the Solano Mudcats. They're throwing up a five spot right now as the Blues get their fourth run of the inning and they double the score of the Mudcats. A run wasn't even going to score on that play. On the ground ball to Russell. Hansen stopped. He was going to let Russell make the play. But the throw allows Hansen to score. Schroeder goes to third. And now the batter is Jacob Ruley. There's still nobody out. And Ruley swings at the slider and misses. The Really, the first of these string of errors came when Ruley was batting with bases loaded and two outs. And the Blues still trailing. He hit a chopper right back to the mound. And from two feet away, the pitcher Casey, as there's another hit by pitch and the bases are loaded. The, ba the pitcher Casey overhand threw it from about two feet away and threw it past the catcher. Yeah, it was either a flip situation right there. Or if you want to throw, you could have gone to first too, but he was standing right there. All you had to do was just toss it over to the catcher and you're out of there. Well, there's still nobody out. It's bases loaded for the Blues and Jasper Dalton wrecked is being hung out to dry on the mound and he still has to go about this inning and try and find a way to somehow muster up three outs with Trevor Schmidt at the plate. Another big error we've got to talk about as he takes a fastball low and out. The Blues were still trailing by one when Schmidt came up his last time up. It was bases loaded again. There were two outs. He hit a ground ball to second base. Nava booted it. He then threw it over the head of the third baseman, Russell, and the Blues scored three runs. 1-0. And Schmidt swings and misses. It's one ball and one strike. Yeah, it's like we said earlier, only takes one. You know, it just took that one boot. And the Blues are off to the races. There have been five errors. All five of the errors have come since that Ruley at bat last inning with two outs. 1-1. One, one. And Schmidt watches a fastball in the dirt. Two balls and one strike. A complete reversal of fortune for the San Luis Obispo Blues, who are now well on their way to winning this series and it improving to 5-2. and 2-1 two. Two, to Schmidt. It's on the outside corner for a strike. It's two balls and two strikes. And Schmidt is kicking himself for not swinging the bat. Yeah, don't really blame him. Can't really find the zone right now. Is Schmidt taken there, that fastball. 2-2. Two, two. And Schmidt laces it into right field, base hit. One run's coming in to score. That's Schroeder right behind him. Is Nin Burns. The Blues score two more. The throw gets away. Runners at second and third. It's 14-6. Yeah, and Schmidt, he gets a hanging breaking ball. On that 2-2 two -two count, does the right thing, catches it, adds apex, puts a nice swing on it, and an easy base hit into right field. Also, an, an additional 90. No one was covering second base on the throw to third, and he just goes ahead and trots into second. Now there's runners at second and third for JT Ricken. Well, Recht has the ball taken from his hand. He... Had a tough inning. Three straight walks to open the frame. All three of those runners scored. Then the single in the air that allowed Hansen to reach third. He came around to score. A hit by pitch to Schroeder. He scored here in the inning. Then the error on the ground ball to third base when Burns was up. He came in to score. After that, it was the hit by pitch to Ruley. The single by Schmidt. And it's still second and third. And nobody out. We're going to take a break here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Collect ourselves a little bit and come back with the Blues still with two runners on and nobody out. Up 14-6.
time there's some strange evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. Yeah, you're reading the scoreboard right. The Blues lead by eight. They still have two runners on, and there is still not an out in this seventh inning. The Blues have already scored six runs, and they scored seven runs last inning. And JT Ricken, who's the only batter that hasn't hit for the Blues in this inning, to face Ryan Fortune, the new right-hander, who misses high. One ball and no strikes. The Blues have brought up eight hitters in the inning. There has not been an out, and there have been five errors since there were two outs last inning by the Mudcats. 1-0. And Rickon laces a line drive into right field. Another base hit. Here comes one run. It's 15-6. Schmidt is held at third. And another base hit for the Blues. Wow, the Blues are feeling themselves right now. That's a great piece of hitting from JT Rickon. Going the other way, finding a barrel, and bringing in another run. Well, the Blues score, you score pricing, as I'm sure being abused these past couple innings yeah. and now Jake Bold who let off the inning with a walk is back up to the plate there's still nobody out first and third and Bold takes that fastball low one ball and no strikes Fortune threw on Friday in a game that was eerily similar to this one but not quite to the same degree where the Mudcats scored seven runs in the sixth all with two outs eventually won it but this is a whole nother story the Blues have scored now 14 runs in the span of the last one out gotten by the Mudcats. Wow. When you put it like that, it yeah. really sums things up. There's the strike to bowl, one ball and one strike. But the fans that stayed, and many of them did, a really nice crowd here at Sinsheimer Stadium, they have been treated to some huge festivities here these last couple innings. 1-1, one, one, and bowl taps it foul, one ball and two strikes. Yeah, Bull wants to get the hack in here, wants to join the party, find a good barrel. Last time he was up, he scored all on free 90s with that walk, pass ball, pass ball, pass ball, and he scores. There's another pick to first, but diving back is Ricken. The Blues have batted around, and no one has gotten out. I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. The scorecard's getting lit up right now. 1-2, and Bold hits a little nubber into center field. This could be trouble for the outfielders, but Indelicato makes the running catch. No tag from third from Schmidt. And that's the first out of the inning. So you wonder if Bold's getting heckled back to the dugout. Hey, the first one of us to get out of here in the seventh. Not by the guys. Everyone's feeling good. Maybe give him a little bit of a hard time because he's a newer guy, but... He started the inning for the Blues. The Blues have batted around now in the past two innings. It's been a wild ride since the second out happened in the seventh. And that's inside. One ball and no strikes. On the right-hander, Corbin Ibarra having himself a day. And now the day may be a little bit overshadowed by the fact the Blues have 15 runs. He's 3-for-3 three three and has a walk. 1-0. That's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, be careful pitching to this guy. He's got three knocks on the day and a walk. Now he's in another 2-0 count. I guess the only thing the Blues haven't done yet today is hit a home run. They're still looking for the first one on the season. That would finish out the day for Ibarra in a hitter's count. And that's high. In the strike zone, though, for a strike. Two balls and one strike. Blues with some help from the Mudcats. They now lead by nine. And Ibarra takes in the dirt. Three and one. Whole lot of runs here in the past couple frames. Ibarra looking to add with a runner at third and another runner at first. And Schmidt at third. And Ricken at first. And he pulls it on the ground. Foul down the third baseline. And the count moves full. He was ready for that one. Maybe a a little too ready, a little early on that fastball there. Yanks it down the line, just foul. We'll go back at it, 3-2. Fortune taking his time. 
Fortune working on some signs with Russell, his third baseman. And now he's getting back on the rubber to look in at Ibarra. Still could get out of this inning with just one pitch if he can roll a double play. 3-2. And that's upstairs. Another walk in the inning. And now the bases are loaded once again. Record attendance just announced for this season. The fans here today won up the firework night. 1,552 fans at today's game after the really big performance yesterday where the Blues showed up for the fireworks. That's a huge number as Zach Tollerman takes upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Tollerman in his first at-bat this inning also drew a walk. Everyone on the Blues staff, we always guess the attendance before the end of the game. And, Jack, you should have used your guess from yesterday today at 1546. I was lower today. Yeah. And it felt like the crowd was close but a little bit lower. But, no, a huge crowd here today. Never count out the Blues fans. They show up. Well, they'll keep showing up if the Blues can keep putting up runs. 2-0 count on Tollerman. And he hits a pop-up on the infield. Toby, the shortstop, chases it in. Infield fly rule, and Tollerman is out. Took a big hack 2-0 and didn't get what he wanted. That's the second out of the inning. Yeah, now with two outs here, you got Hanson coming up. You just got to tap the bag anywhere you are in the infield. Don't got to overthink it. Hanson has reached base... Third, reached third base in his two at-bats. He hit a triple back in the sixth, hit a single, and reached third on an error by the center fielder, McGee, that let the ball fly all the way to the wall. And he's enjoying batting in this game. He got to miss the early part of the game that was tough against the starter, and now he's got two hits since coming in. Two triples. How about that? I think the second one was a single and an error, but he'll count it as a triple, I'm sure. In the count, no balls and two strikes. Bases loaded. Schmidt at third. Ricken at second. And it's Corbin Ibarra at first. 0-2. Oh, and he strikes out swinging. The inning is finally over, but the Blues score a total of seven runs once again. It is 15-6 as we head to the top of the eighth inning.
0-1 count on Braden and Delicato. As the Blues lead it by a score of 15-6. to And all of a sudden, this game has taken a turn for the worse for the Mudcats. It's in Delicato, Toby, and Austin Russell do up. And that's upstairs, one ball and one strike. Here's the 1-1 to the leadoff hitter from Saldana, and it's upstairs. 2-1, the Blues have scored in total 14 runs across the past two innings to take a 15-6 lead. And now they lead by nine in this rubber match, trying to win their second series of the year. We hope you can continue to tune in through the rest of this season. And we hope that you stayed through it. And if you did, you're the true Blues fans that are now watching them in the lead, 2-2. Two to two. And that's in there, strike three called. Another strikeout for Saldana. And the Mudcats look real dismayed at the plate after the way these past two innings have gone. That is a little bit outside. One ball and no strikes. Now Saldana, who came into the game when the Blues were trailing by five, is pitching with a nine-run lead. Very quick turn of events, too, of the past two innings. And the count is two balls and no strikes right now on Tyler Toby, who is one for four on the day with a single back in the first. Toby flies out of play foul. Two and one the count. Big attendance, big offense, and a big lead for the Blues. Not sure what else you want here in San Luis Obispo as Toby wraps it on the ground. Diving snare by Ricken. Gets up to throw in time for the out. What a play. Web gem by the third baseman for the second out of the inning. JT Ricken with a miraculous stab at third and an insane throw across the diamond. And it's just that kind of day for the Mudcats. Wow, what a play from Ricken. He just robbed Tyler Toby of a hit. And there's two away. And now a liner to center field. This could end the inning. Burns tracks it into the gap and makes the catch. A 1-2-3 inning headlined by a miraculous play from JT Ricken, the Oregon Duck. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. It is still... Blues by nine.
The Blues are up for what should be the last time in this game. Bottom of the eighth inning, and it's 9-1-2. Augusto Schroeder then back to the top of the lineup for the Blues, who lead by nine innings after bringing across 14 runs in the past two offensive frames. They have 11 hits. They're the real story, though, five errors committed by the Mudcats since the last two innings. 1-0 on Schroeder. And that is outside. Two balls and no strikes. Schroeder has scored the past two innings on a walk and a run and a hit by pitch and a run. He's gotten on base for free, and he's come around to score both times. 2-0. That is outside. Three balls and no strikes. And at some point, if you're the Mudcats, you're just trying to find a way to get back in the dugout as quickly as possible. This game is drawing on very long and that's a strike three balls one strike fortune delivers and Schroeder backs out of the way the chin music and draws his third straight free 90 and now we head back to the top of the lineup and there's a runner on with nobody out. So now back to the top of the order. Nin Burns, who is reached the last two times on a walk and an error. He also has two hits today. As the count is one ball and no strikes. Nine walks for the Blues today, and they've been hit by two pitches. Add on top of that the five errors, and you'll come to understand with 11 hits how they're at 15 runs. Fortune wants a new baseball. He's going to get one with the count two balls and no strikes. We were talking about Burns the other night. He's now just trying to look for something else to talk about outside of the craziness that's happening on offense and what's happened the last two innings. A large collection of tattoos on his legs as he fouls that one off. We're talking about some of the best athletes of all time. Floyd Mayweather, Kobe Bryant, Ken Griffey Jr. And the ones that are coming next. Thinking about Deion Sanders, a lot of these other goats of their positions in sports. Tiger Woods as well is one that he's contemplating adding. He said he just loves what they embody and their mental approach to the game. 3-1 and another walk. Two straight walks to open up the inning again for the Blues. And at this point, wondering whether the Mudcats have any more pitching. Here comes the head coach out of the third base dugout to talk with Fortune. But no, just looking at the way that Burns has tallied up those tattoos and the ones that he's thinking about got me a little inspired. Normally not a tattoo guy, but with the way that Burns is able to pull them off, I you know, wonder if like someone like me can pull them off. Like, I, not the biggest tattoo guy, but Burns makes them look good. And with the athletes and the portraits of the pictures he has, inspiring all. Another pitching change here at Sinsheimer Stadium. It's a righty coming in. We'll be right back here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Blues up by nine. They've got two more runners on.
new arm in is actually a left-hander. It's Noah Garcia, who's played first in DH in this series, and now it looks like the position players are coming out of the bullpen for the Solano Mudcats, who trail the Blues by nine. Two walks to start the inning. It's Schroeder at second, Burns at first, and now Jacob Ruley comes to the dish. Hit by pitches last time up, reached on an error, and a crucial one. Two at-bats to go back in the sixth, and the count is one ball and no strikes. Rubber match here, and it's gotten away from the Mudcats as the Blues and route to another series victory. And the Mudcats went from up by 6-1, looking like they might have their first opening series win in the last three summers. Now trailed by nine as Garcia misses up. Two balls and one strike. The Blues will be back in action later this week. They take on the Menlo Park Legends on Thursday and Friday. That's upstairs again. Three balls and one strike. After that, it's the first road game of the season. The Blues will travel to Santa Barbara to face the Foresters on Saturday and then host the Foresters that same Sunday, just that next day. There's a chopper towards third. It's bodied by Russell, and there's going to be no play. Bases loaded, nobody out for the Blues. Russell did a great job to keep that one in front, but he couldn't come up with a throw. And Jacob Ruley is aboard. The Blues will then be in Santa Barbara We've got a pinch hitter coming in for the Blues. In Trevor Schmidt's spot, it's going to be number one, Jake Hixenbaugh, who actually does lead the Blues in batting average across the two games he's played. A 500 hitter, he's three for six with three singles, two runs batted in, and he takes the DH spot coming in for Schmidt, who finished the day, pretty good day again for Schmidt. He had two singles, a couple of runs batted in, he still continued to be the Blues' most consistent hitter on the season. But Hicksonbaugh, the high school kid, gets another shot, headed to Monterey Peninsula College next year. And he rolls it towards second base. Nava throws to second and throws it away. One run is in for the Blues. Here comes Nin Burns coming home to score as well as Jacob Ruley and Hicksonbaugh to second. A bases clearing error, and it is 18-6. Nava, the second baseman, tried to make the sidearm throw to second base to try and turn the double play. and Again, just a wide throw. It's the sixth error by the Mudcats in these last three innings. And Hickson Baugh's aboard. It is a 12-run Blues lead. The Blues have had some good at-bats, but a lot of luck involved and some real gifts coming in from the Mudcats. The Blues have scored now 17 runs in the past two innings and no outs as Ricken rolls it towards third. Here's the long throw in time for the out as Russell snipes out Ricken at first. Hicksonbaugh moves to third and there's one away. Now the batter's Jake Bold, still coming, trying to come through with his first hit for the Blues this summer as the count is no balls and one strike. Playing his first game, debuting the catcher from Princeton. He's got a walk. He scored a run, but he's still looking for his first hit. A one, and that's in the dirt. It squirts away from the catcher Schwartz. Here comes the 19th run. It is a 13-run Blues lead. Base is clear now. First time we've said that in a while. But there's still only one out in the inning, and Bold is up with a 1-1 count. He takes high and out. 
Two balls and one strike. That's in there for a called strike on the outer half. Two and two on the Blues catcher. And Bold chases that fastball and swings and misses. The first strike out of the pen for Garcia. That's the second out. Corbin Ibarra has been the clear standout for the Blues today. He is three for three. He's walked twice. He's scored two runs. He's got a couple of runs batted in. He's a puzzle that has not been figured out yet by the Mudcats. And he swings and taps this one back into the glove. It's 0-1-1. Oh, one the count. And that is upstairs, one and one. Ibarra, who played in 18 games as a senior at IMG Academy, didn't play this freshman year at Tulane, but he's got three hits for the Blues today and spoils that one out of play, one and two. As we were talking about in the broadcast yesterday, Ibarra, only the fifth player in Tulane baseball history to have a last name that starts with a Y. How they came up with that one, I don't know, but they track the stats that matter, apparently. Two balls and two strikes. Two two. And Ibarra breaks his bat. The bat head flies over the head of the pitcher. And the toss to first for the out. Dangerous sight here at Sinsheimer when we head to the top of the ninth inning. Blues looking to close things out with a razor thin 13 run lead. The Blues are trying to close this long game out. It's a 19-6 San Luis Obispo lead here in the rubber match between the Mudcats and the Blues. And Saldana deals again and hits the outside corner with a fastball. It's 0-1. The batter is Jake Tandy. It's the four-hole hitter. Then Nate Schwartz and Caleb Jeske all do up for the Mudcats in the inning. And an 0-1-1 count. Hicks and Baugh's in the game at short. Hansen, the past couple innings, back in left field. That's the extent of the defensive changes for the Blues. Who, after just a miraculous run of scoring 18 runs over the past three innings, have this 13-run lead and trying to come away with a win. A lot of gifts involved by the Solano Mudcats. Oh, two, and that's upstairs. Saldana 
came into the game with the Blues trailing by five runs, and now he pitches trying to get a three-inning save. One, two. And that's inside. Saldana kicks and fires, and Tandy hits a high shot out to center field. Burns is tracking it in the blue sky and makes the catch for the first out of the ninth. For the Mudcats, this game unraveled at a bad time. They have not won the opening series of their summer in any of the past three years. We're on their way to doing so with a five-run lead in the sixth inning, but... Since then, it has been all San Luis Obispo with 18 runs put up across the last three frames as Saldana misses inside to Nate Schwartz. But the Blues are going to keep on their path of winning the series. They have not lost a series yet this year. The worst has been a two-game series split with the Bay Area Admirals. But it will be yet another winning weekend for the Blues who lead this one by a total of 13 runs. And that's in there for strike two. One ball and two strikes. One, two. And a fisted fly ball towards shallow center field. Burns over into the gap, and he makes the catch. Whole lot of when the Blues score, you score going on today here at Sinsheimer Stadium in front of a packed house, 1,552 fans enjoying what is one out away from a Blues series victory. Here on a sunny Sunday afternoon. Beautiful weather, a fun game, and a no-one count. The batter is Jeske, who doesn't have a hit today. He's grounded into two fielders' choices, and he's walked and scored one of the six runs. A one. And that's in the dirt. One ball and one strike. One one. Big swing and a miss, and the Blues are a strike away from a victory here on Sunday. The fans that are still here after the 18 run marathon over the last three innings step to their feet, clapping for a potential win, shouting hot sauce, and Saldana looks to send them home. One two, and that is high and tight. Two balls and two strikes. Still a strike away. Saldana delivers. And that is inside. Three balls and two strikes. Well, you would assume right now that Caleb Jeske is going to get the most center cut fastball that Saldana can throw. No reason to walk a batter with a 13-run lead. 3-2. And that is high. And a two-out walk here in the ninth. A runner aboard with a 13-run deficit, which means that Max McGee gets another at-bat. McGee is 0 for 3. He has been hit by a pitch and reached back in the 7th. Saldana deals in the dirt. It is off of the catcher bold, but the runner does not advance. Got one ball and no strikes. One out. That is just off the outside corner. Two balls and no strikes.
Here's the 2-0. That's a strike on the outer half. Two balls and one strike. The Mudcats, after this disappointing loss, will go play humble. Or I stand corrected. It's a three and one count. But this is the last non league game that the Mudcats will be playing until they start their league play on June 8th against the. Healdsburg Prune Packers, runner goes, and that's tapped foul. Then on June 9th, against the Sonoma Stompers, the Mudcats will make their home opening day on June 9th. 3-2, runner will take off from first. There he goes, and that is strike three called on the inside corner. The Blues win it. By a score of 16 to 9, or 19 to 6, in a marathon victory here on Sunday, and they win the series versus the Solano Mudcats. This one was a chaotic series, a dramatic series, and the Blues lucky to come away with a victory. And they were helped out by the Mudcats in this game. 13 hits for the Blues, but the Mudcats committed six errors all in the final three innings of the game for the Blues to come away with the 13-run victory. Stay tuned. We're going to have an interview coming up with hopefully Corbin Ibarra, who went three for three and walked three times as well. But the Blues win it by a score of 19-6.
Welcome you back on the Slow Blues Streaming Network, and our guest of the day is Corbin Ibarra, a 3-for-4 day at the plate, two walks. You came in today 0-for-4, and in a close one where the Blues win by 13. You're the big hero, three hits. Does it feel good to kind of turn your summer around in just one day, go from 0-for-4 to 3-for-7? Yeah, it feels really good. Um, a lot of confidence out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Blues, you, you guys have... A 6-1 deficit going into the sixth inning. You rally for 18 runs in three innings. What does that say about your offense? It means we can come alive at any time. Any time. And how did it feel to get that, that series win, rubber match? It's kind of hand-wrapped, gifted to you guys, but you're able to come away with the series win. It feels really good. Uh, we come back uh, Thursday. And that just brings a lot of confidence for everyone on the team. So, well, yeah. Three days off. The last question, do you, you got any big off-day plans? You know what? have to go to the beach and just eat well and keep working. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, the Blues win it by 13. Certainly eating well today against the Solano Mudcats. Thank you guys again for tuning in all weekend on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. We'll be back on Thursday and Friday for a series against the Menlo Park Legends.